Lose, lose track. One. Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting, July 2nd, 2018, at 7.05 p.m. here in the town hall offices. The agenda for tonight is to review minutes of a previous meeting, review the mail, take any public comment, and then we have a public hearing scheduled. It's the first hearing on proposed retail establishment at the corner of Mill Village and Greenfield Roads. Then any new business, then any business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of the meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and we'll adjourn. Planning board members okay with that agenda? I'm, I'm just wondering, I mean, uh, is, the, is somebody there for the ANR? Should we do that quick and get it over? Is that a long? No, no it could be a long one, so okay, we're right. going to do that at the end okay. under new business. And I would like to, uh, I think we can introduce ourselves um, as planning board members. You want to start? Rachel Blaine. And we have to remember to speak into our mics. Sorry, and Rachel anybody Blaine. else speaking tonight, we yep. have mics set up, and this is not just for this room, but also for people on TV. Oh. So. So I say it again. Yeah. Rachel Blaine. I'm John Waite. Kip Camosa. Paul Alice. And we have, I think we're expecting one more person, and we have two folks who uh, uh, can't, can't make it today who uh, sent their regrets. Minutes are not available, and um, the last one from the middle of May, we already voted to approve them, and then our last meeting actually was a very short one. So... We'll get them next time. Yes. Roger. Um, review of mail, I'd suggest we put that off till afterwards. I looked at, at it quickly and didn't see anything that's vital for tonight's discussion. So we can do that later. Other than... Then we'd like to take a, a minute or two at the beginning of our meetings. If there's any public comment about anything that's not on our agenda tonight, this would be a time for a quick question or a quick uh, comment about something that has some relevance to the planning board. Um, is there anybody here who has a comment about something that's not on the agenda tonight? Seeing none, we'll move along. And we've been joined by a fifth member of the planning board. You want to introduce yourself? I'm Roger Sadowski. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and we've got to remember to use the mics when you, uh, okay. when you talk. So let me read the notice of public hearing, July 2nd, 2018. Notice is hereby given that the Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on July 2nd, 2018 at 7 o'clock in the Deerfield Municipal Offices to review plans submitted by Bowler Engineering on behalf of South Deerfield DG LLC for a site on Mill Village Road, Assessor's Map 132, lots 29 and 30. The project proposes the development of the property through the construction of a 9,318,000 ,000 square foot retail store and associated site improvements including driveways, parking areas, utilities, stormwater infrastructure, and landscaping. The plans will be reviewed pursuant to the following regulations. <clears throat> One, zoning bylaw section 5400, which is called site plan review. Two is a zoning bylaw section 3120. It's a reduction of parking requirement, uh, and that uh, requires a special permit. And three, stormwater regulation for the town of Deerfield. Copies of the site plan and associated applications are available for review at the Deerfield Municipal Offices during regular business hours. This legal notice was, uh, elect was published electronically on the Greenfield Recorder website as well as mass public notices. It was uh, published in the Recorder on June 15th and June 22nd and notification was sent by certified mail to abutters, I believe within 300 feet of the property. Any person interested or wishing to be heard should appear at this time and place designated. So with that, we'll open the public hearing. And I just want to give a quick overview of public hearings. And there is some sort of rules that go along, well, guidelines that go along with public participation at meetings. The town of Deerfield welcomes everyone at public meetings. Um, all meetings of the town boards and committees shall be open to the public and conform to the open meeting law. We on the planning board are your elected and, uh, public officials, and we believe community participation is important and vital to the understanding, the programs, and operations of our town government. We endeavor to inform and to listen. So during these meetings, we strive to find a balance between hearing from members of the community and conducting required business. In order to achieve this objective, 
we have several rules and procedures that we establish. One is that public comment time will be allowed at each, will be allocated at each meeting. The other, and this is kind of important sometimes, is the chair or our designee shall preside over the meetings. In this role, um, in my role as chair, I'll acknowledge speakers from the public, determine the length of time for public participation, and ensure comments are appropriate. During any part of the meeting, the public may be recognized by the chair to speak on an item before the committee. All remarks will be addressed through the chair of the meeting rather than directly to other participants. So that's, it's hard to have a back and forth with so many people, so we appreciate it if it kind of comes through, comes through us. Comments made by anyone at the meeting should be at all times respectful. Um, so those are the, the main highlights. So um, again, I'll try to facilitate the discussion tonight and public hearings are exactly what they're, it says. It's a time for the public to make comments about an issue to the planning board. It's not necessary for the planning board to respond at this time. We have our own policies and procedures that we have to follow according to the bylines, bylaws. So tonight we want to hear from as many people as possible. We also have some written comments from people who weren't able to make it. Um, and so we'll, we'll let that be known at the same time. But before we go to the public part, we'd like to learn more about the project that we're looking at tonight. So I'd like to invite the applicants for the development at, um, on Miller Village Road uh, to come up and give us an overview of their project. We have an application before us for a site plan review and the special permit and the stormwater uh, bylaw application. One question before you get going, and this came up at our last meeting, was the, the fees. The application was submitted with um, the appropriate $250 fee, but we weren't sure about how much land disturbance. So have you determined that, and has that fee been paid? We had, uh, respectfully, Austin Turner with Bowler Engineering, and joined this evening by Patrick Natriba from Lascotti Development. Great. Patrick is representing the firm who has the controlling interest in the property. So, I know, I think. Patrick. I don't know, can you uh, can you hear me? Because I not very well, right? John, are you there? You want to tell us how to turn it up? Just a bit. This is our our uh, FCAT engineer. engineer who might be able to, to help us. Are the green lights on on yours? Yeah, green lights on. All right. It's not working. Yeah, but the speakers aren't loud enough in the. Uh, can you hear me? That's better. Better? No. No? Can I hear? He's just going to turn it up. No, are those I, mics? I'm not even. I'm not, is mine even working or are you just hearing me? It's not working that well either. Yeah. I think we're facing this way. I don't know. It's just your voice, John. They're not. No, no, it's the speakers. They're not turned up. Something's not amplifying. No, because no. I can feel mine's not on either. The hall speakers are not turned on. Right. He gave me the high sign like it was good, but. It might be that they want to turn around. Hello, 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 not John. Not yet. No. Nope. Hello. That's, That's a, little, a little better. That's a little more. better, but it's still Or not. was it because I was talking louder? Well. Well. Yeah. well it needs to be turned <laughs> up in the hall more. <laughs> He's worried more about the TV. Testing. Hey. One, two, three, four. Hello. Are the mics working? Better now? All right, Austin, you want to give yours a shot and see what happens? Test. 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 I'm, I'm wondering if. No, those aren't. The test, if test, test. Facing this way, if we want to hmm. just turn them around. No, they're all green. No, these on no. the desk aren't coming through as well as these. Test. Uh, there you go. Very nice. Test. No, test. the other one now, John. Test. Test. The other one. There, there you go. There you go. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. So thank you. Could you just manage to introduce yourselves again and then mm -hmm. we'll sure. get to the for, for the record, Austin Turner with Bowler Engineering and joined this evening by Patrick Natriba from Lascotti Development 
and Patrick is representing the firm who has a controlling interest in the property, and he's, he's the applicant's representative this evening. Uh, I believe the question was relative to the fees. Yes. So the, we, have, we have correspondence, email correspondence, suggesting that the fees had been received and accounted for as part of the initial application. Uh, I'm not aware of additional fees being required, but if there are additional fees that are required, Patrick can provide those as part of this, part of this process. We don't, have, we don't have a blank check this evening, but we can, we can file that. All right, because if you remember, we, at one point it said um, our old fee schedule was, was um, $10 per 100 square feet, but really it's uh, $10 per 1,000 square foot of right. land disturbance, not just the size of the building, but so we need to know. So sort of after we look at this, we'll know what the actual land disturbance will be, and we'll, uh, we'll figure out the fee. Sure, and the, the, the property just right. is kind of anecdotally, the property is about two acres. Right. We're probably an acre or so of that. Maybe. All right. But we, we can we'll work that out with staff. I know um, they hadn't mentioned it between now and then. We spoke to them a handful of times, but we're happy to take All care right. of that. So we have the engineering firm, and then you're the, um, the developer? That is correct, yes. So you're the developer, because he said you're acting on behalf of someone, but... Uh, oh, the applicant. Just representing the applicant. So he's Lascotti Development. So who's the, who's the applicant? It's South... Um, South Deerfield DG, comma, LLC. I am, we am, one of the same. Okay, that's okay. what I just wanted to. I am, we am, one of the same. <laughs> it has to. It, we can't turn it off. We can't turn it's it off. controlled in there. He has to turn it off. It feels like it went down again. Can, is, this, is this one better? If yours is better, then you've got to just go back and forth on that one. Kind of like a drive-in theater kind of setup. The room's not set up for a PA system. It's set up for television. So we could easily, uh, I think. Does this one work? Okay. No, uh, so no, I wonder if the better way to do it, because it is picking up on the TV, so if we, maybe we could turn the table a little bit, and so you and could you be could, facing... Uh, like, then you could, they could hear you as well as they hear us, because I think it's a, more or less the, the way the... Let's do it. That's what I don't know. Which, John, which camera are you using for the TV? Yeah. Yeah, so why don't we turn it so you can go sideways there. Excuse me. All right, so that might help, and then I guess it's just a matter of projecting as well as you can. Right. So we appreciate appreciate thank that. You. Best. Thank, right. you, thank you. Thank you. So, in answering your question, we understand that we've paid all the fees, but if there are any additional fees that need to be paid. We will get you the information you need to calculate them, and then we will get you a check overnighted. Good. And I do have, uh, I see that several of the fees, fees were paid. Yeah. Yeah. So, and let me just uh, uh, go back to the. Yeah, so the, apl the name of the applicant is South Deerfield DG Series LLC. That is correct. And then um, property owner uh, Karen and Greg Gardner. Um, and then the engineers are Bowler Engineering. And that's you, Austin. That's right. correct. Yep. Is the property owner here? Is they have anything to add to this? Or? Uh, interesting. All right, so if you could give us an overview of, uh, of the project before we get into public comment, that'd be great. Is this mic working, or you want me just to talk really, really loud? Loudly. If you talk slowly and you project, we can hear you. <laughs> Okay. I think loudly. So you talk slowly and project. <coughs> I can't hear you. So the project that we're proposing is about a 9,100 square foot retail store, the tenant of which would be Dollar General, as the plans identify. 
Patrick's group being Lascotti Development and the applicant entity, which are one and the same, would remain as the owner with the tenant being holding a lease or being the end game of a lease with Patrick being the controlling entity. So Dollar General would not be the owner, but Patrick's group would be, just for clarity. Sure. Um, and then for those who may or may not be familiar uh, with the, the user being Dollar General, the name implies that they're uh, like, a, like a dollar store where everything in the store is a dollar, and that, that is not the case. The, I'm sure people are familiar with them, um, but generally speaking, I think the most similar comparison that I can draw would be like a pharmacy style use minus the pharmaceutical component. So you can get a variety of goods, more of a general store. The, the name is misleading, some people confuse it, uh, but for what it's worth, just to kind of frame that part of the discussion. Uh, the property, as, as we mentioned, is at the corner of Mill Village and Greenfield Road. Uh, the use itself is, is allowed, obviously, uh, by special permit through the zoning board, which, as we've been instructed, the first part of this is to review with the planning board, go through site plan review. Um, presumptively, that goes as we as the applicant hope it does, and then we engage uh, at the next level. So we're here this evening uh, on for the stormwater permit as well as site plan review. Um, I believe we're running those concurrently, right? Okay. Yep. Uh, and we said we would do the special permit for the proposed reduction in parking at the same time. Correct. Well, that um, comes under the planning board's purview. Right. And just as a point of clarification, and you'll know better than I, we were told that's not actually a special permit. It's a waiver. It's a waiver. Okay. Just if there's a case, there's a procedural all right. nuance. All right. That's all. Just to make sure we're clear. Mm -hmm. Good. So this project here, um, Patrick and I have spent a, a lot of time kind of getting to this point. And we've been looking at this property for probably the better part of a year. And we do a lot of things while we're doing that. We're doing survey, and we're doing geotech, and we're doing kind of all the background due diligence on it to make sure that it's developable. And that's not only from the physical characteristics of the property, but also in terms of, you know, it meets the requisite land use characteristics in town. It, the, the property is dimensionally uh, suitable. It meets the underlying zoning requirements. We can design it to meet those performance standards. Uh, and then we get here, and this is you know, a year or so in the making. It's not just kind of by happenstance. Uh, the property we're proposing is through an access driveway on on Greenfield Road. The location um, is not random. The, the location was actually a previously permitted driveway that, that Mass DOT had permitted for a commercial use. Uh, we have an active application with DOT. They asked that obviously we, we fill in some of the blanks, if you will, in our application because it's a specific user now as opposed to a uh, commercial use. So that conversation um, has been going well, uh, given that they approved it previously for a commercial entity. We don't expect you know, significant feedback, but we're in that process and it's active right now. The, the project has been designed, uh, the layout of this actually was established uh, in part and not insignificantly so based on some initial feedback that we arranged a meeting with our immediate butters to the, the north end of the property. Um, when, when Patrick's group had got this property under control, they reached out and then were reached out to uh, by those folks and we came down or over um, a couple months ago to sit down with the neighborhood. They'd asked that we meet with them to solicit feedback as we were designing the plans to make sure that any concerns or comments or requests that they had were incorporated. Um, we've had subsequent discussions with them. They've been an active part of our discussion and, and rightfully so because um, it's not a one and done for us. We're here, obviously there's many interested people in the room we want to take that feedback seriously. One of the things that generated out of that discussion was the request to put in um, additional screening and landscaping uh, to that property. So this line that I'm tracing here on the property and on that side there, it's an eight foot solid wood fence on, on the front of which, and I say front meaning the property or the side of the fence which is going to be facing the neighbors. Is also going to be landscaped, so it's not just a blank wall. We're going to put landscaping along that fence. Um, 
within the last couple of weeks, they reached out to us again and asked us to refine that approach a little bit. And specifically in the back of the property, in this location here, the fence actually was proposed to go up into the corner. I'm talking back, my back against you. Can everybody still hear when I'm, when I'm speaking? Okay. The, the fence goes up into this corner and then came down. And the intent of that initially was to put it at the highest part of the property and closest to the road so it cut off the site angle. The site elevations in that spot aren't that much different than as you get a little bit interior. But their specific request for this house specifically was to pull this fence back and pull it a little further interior to the property because they wanted to maintain a sight line to the, the field that's going to be in the back of us. We've agreed to do that. The things that uh, we've talked about with our abutters to implement on the site plans, not all of them are represented on the plans that have been filed given some of the timing of applications and things of that nature. But we intend as part of this process, there's going to be some comments, there's going to be some refinement of the plans. All of those things would be tucked into a final set of drawings that results from these conversations. Uh, just so we're clear and, and so people know if, if there are neighbors here who met with us previously and don't see that change on the plans, it's not because we're not going to do it, it's just because we're trying to do this efficiently and make those changes at one time. So the access, as I'd mentioned, is going to come in from Greenfield Road on the previously approved curb cut from Mass DOT. We're amending that, that permit now, as I mentioned. Uh, interior to the park, interior to the site is 30 parking spaces. And as was alluded to, the, the, the site plan re regulations require 38 spaces. There is a mechanism in there that allows at the planning board's discretion to reduce that parking if they feel it's appropriate to the use and not detrimental to the, the site plan. I'm, I'm speaking, if I'm not speaking that correctly, please intervene. Um, and what we had talked about last time, even though it wasn't a hearing on account of some of the butter mix up, but we can accommodate 38 spaces on the property and still meet all of the underlying zoning requirements. Our neighbors actually asked us to not include the additional eight spaces which are located in this area here. And reason being is they wanted us, rather than put more pavement on the property, to do some additional landscaping, enhance that buffer, and, and not encroach as close to the property boundary as that would require us to do. Uh, we re we've reviewed that. Providing 30 spaces is very much consistent with our operational expectations for a, a project like this. I say that, and I do not expect that all 30 spaces would be occupied. That's just kind of where we find maybe the highest, most widely used store would probably use somewhere in the 15 to 20 space range, and then that gives you a little bit of buffer if you need it. I, I certainly wouldn't advocate for any more than that, um, but again, as the planning board and, and, and we're collectively working through this, that's a discussion that we'll, we'll have. The site, I'm sure folks are familiar with it. Generally speaking, from an elevation standpoint, the back up along Mill Village near Plain Road is higher. It slopes down towards Greenfield Road, generally kind of in a west to east direction. With that in mind, we've designed the stormwater to mimic that hydrology. It's what we're tasked with doing as we review the town's stormwater regulations, as well as those that are required um, by the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection. We've done some soil testing out here, too. Uh, we've done a number of deep borings. We've done test pits to get an understanding of the soil characteristics, both as they relate to the structural components of the building, and then that that we need to put stormwater back in the ground. The dirt out here isn't wonderful. Um, it's certainly suitable for a development like this. It's a little bit lower in terms of its ability to handle stormwater, but we've accommodated that in the design. Our stormwater feature or basin is going to be in this corner, which is the northeast corner. That basin is designed to not only hold, um, treat, and infiltrate stormwater, we've really designed it to be for the larger storm events, you know, and what we refer to frequently as the 100 year storm you've been talking about. What that really means is the storm that has a 1% chance annually of occurring. We provided the planning board and the town with a large drainage report which has all of the calculations supporting that. I'd be happy to get into that in hyper detail. I don't know that this is the 
the point, but that comes later, I suppose. Yep. From a utility perspective, uh, the only private utility, if you will, that we would, would be designing here would be a subsurface disposal system for the wastewater. The rest of the utilities would be a connection to the municipal system that exists in Mill Village Road. Um, lighting is a point that comes up, and I suspect we'll get into uh, in a little more detail, but generally speaking, we've designed these lights. They're going to be LED fixtures because they're efficient and allow us to be a little bit more focused in terms of directional lighting. They're shielded and cut off, which means they're forward throw and then back so that you don't get a kind of a, a circle around the light, but more you get a focused directional. And they're cut off on the horizon, what they call zero plane, which means they're focused down as well. And so you don't get updraft or kind of a upward halo, if you will. Uh, we've only put them where we need them to have adequate lighting in the parking and around the building. Generally, and is the case with um, this particular retailer, the sight lights, and when I say sight lights, I mean both the ones that are intended to illuminate the sidewalk around the building and those that are in the parking lot and driveway, stay on for about a half an hour after the store is closed just for employees to finish up and provide them with lighting in the parking lot, and then those lights go off, and that includes the road, mount, the road sign as well. Only one light on the building, which is kind of a little circle um, light to illuminate the sidewalk, on each side of the building remains on over the front door and then near the egress points on the corners for security reasons. But those aren't big um, overly bright lights. They're more intended for local illumination around those locations. But then the remainder of the lights go off. The store operating hours are seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. The deliveries are usually one, primary deliveries are once a week. Uh, those are accommodated by what's referred to as a WB67 vehicle. That's the largest vehicle that could use the site. That's your conventional trailer delivery vehicle. That vehicle loads in this corner here. It's uh, loaded in where then the driver would offload via a dolly into this door, pick up anything that the store may need to remove, and then leave. Customarily, that operation might take 30 minutes. It's not a very big store, and it doesn't have a lot of deliveries coming back and forth, so it's a pretty efficient operation. They may have what's referred to as vendor trucks, too. Uh, not necessarily this, but a Pepsi truck or a bread truck or milk truck. You might see those in there as well, but those are not uh, larger delivery vehicles. So we've designed the site to accommodate not only our delivery vehicles, but those that may be required for emergency response because that's an important consideration. So you'll notice on the entryway, uh, which is consistent with the DOT's previous approval, we have some wider flares just to accommodate swings that might be required for delivery vehicles. Uh, the landscaping. What was the, number, what was the time frame? The eight to ten? Did you say? Correct. Seven days a week. The operating hours are eight a.m. to ten p.m. Okay. From a landscaping perspective, uh, what we've done too, as I've mentioned previously, with our neighbors. We've designed a number of different plantings, and I'm showing them graphically here. But the intent is that they kind of form the boundary on the outer edge of that screening fence. And then interior as well, we intend to do landscaping along the bottom of the parking lot. Tip, uh, the building is about, just the way the site elevations work from the road, to give you some perspective, the, the building area, the front sidewalk, is about four feet higher than the road on a fairly gentle slope. Um, in an effort to kind of shield vehicles from, from, the, from the road, we've incorporated a number of different ground, ground level plantings immediately up against the parking area. So what that does, it kind of cuts off the angle of sight. Um, there was some discussion here, even though it wasn't technically a hearing, but we took that feedback to heart anyway. One of the things that we were asked with doing was incorporating some additional shade trees. That came as part of our preliminary discussion as well as some of the after discussion that we've had with some people in this room. So we've agreed to incorporate some additional shade trees along the front as well to provide some further breaking up, if you will, of the, of the building and the parking areas. One thing we will do, you know, being presumptuous, but when this project goes to construction, what we've included in the site plan set is an erosion control plan as well. And that's really intended to show the, the controls that would be in place during construction to prevent sediment-laden runoff from leaving the property. That's a requirement for 
a project's, it's a good practice in general. It's required by the EPA when you get to an acre or more of land disturbance. So those plans that were incorporated into the set as well. Um, I'm sure there are a number of different detailed questions from folks in the audience and then from the planning board. I'm happy to get into as much detail as is appropriate this evening. Um, I think with that, I respectfully return it to the planning board and, and answer any questions you may have or that the public may have. Great, thanks very much. Any quick clarifying questions by the planning board? Good, then I, before I open it up, I just want to uh, let people know a few. So we have been, um, we got the application and we have a, I don't know how many pages, but um, we have all the filings here. I'm assuming all of, a lot of the things Austin you talked about are, um, are included on here. Now some of these, you've made changes already since you submitted this, right? So there will be a final at some point. Um. Co correct. I, there will be a final set of site plans that right. obviously incorporates all the feedback we're receiving yep. as part of this process. The plans that you have before you are current in that I have not modified them yet based on the items I discussed in the presentation. I intend to incorporate those in addition to the feedback that we get as part of this process. Thanks. We filed those some time ago. Yep. And I don't, what I'm trying to avoid is people getting confused as to what sets active. Mm -hmm. All right. This one's dated... Um, 420. Yeah, that was the initial application, and there was some initial hearing on May 8th or 9th, and then our hearing last month, yeah. or intended hearing, yeah. Or gathering. Yeah. All right, so just a quick review. So tonight we're looking for public comment on the site plan review, on the uh, request for reducing the parking, and on the stormwater management plan. Um, as was mentioned, what happens after this site plan review done by the planning board, this, and I want to go back to our bylaws, so this is in a commercial one zone, and in a commercial one zone, any retail establishment, uh, 4,000 to 30,000 square feet requires a special permit. Special permits in the town of Deerfield are normally done by the Zoning Board of Appeals. So that special permit process will happen after, if a, if a site plan is approved, then it goes to the special permit. And I just want to highlight some of the differences on what a site plan review looks at and what a special permit looks at. So we're looking at it from a planning board point of view. We have our bylaws. Um, so we look at any structure uh, that's 600 square feet or more. Um, we would review that and require a site plan review. Anything in any construction uh, of a parking lot of 10 or more spaces we would look at. Any grading or clearing and other land development um, we look at as well, earth removal permits. So those are the things, that's the reason why they have the special permit because it is a, um, obviously it's a commercial um, facility structure more than 600 square feet. Some of the things we look at um, and some of the things that are on the site plans that we have in front of us and that have been available at the town hall we look at all the boundary lines and the information uh, regarding the topography. We look at any existing and proposed buildings for the structure, including fences, loading areas, accessory buildings, signs, waste disposal areas, storage areas. We look at water provision, including fire protection measures. We look at sanitation and sewage. Storm drainage, that's very important around here. Obviously, anybody in South Deerfield knows that uh, our water levels are high, so, so where any drainage is going is important. We look at parking, walkways, driveways, other accessories, other um, access areas. We look at trees and shrubs, both existing and planned. We look at uh, exis existing and proposed exterior lighting, uh, make sure they're compliant with all zoning bylaws, and as part of our uh, site plan review is that we have a public hearing so that abutters and others in town um, can participate. There is a there is a, um, a section of this 5450, waiver of technical compliance. The planning board may, upon written request by the applicant, waive any technical requirements um, in this section. Uh, and then, just quickly, some of the things that we look at to, um, we look at how have the developers done in minimizing uh, 
the volume of cut and fill and the number of removed trees six inches in uh, diameter. So that's something that already has, has happened out there that is a concern, I think, of the planning board. And I know the developer might say it's not, uh, it happened prior to this project, but it's obviously an, an issue that the removal of trees was not minimized. Um, we look at maximizing pedestrian and vehicular safety, both on the site and coming and going from it. We want to look at how they have minimized obstruction of the scenic views from the publicly accessible locations. We, we want to look at how they've minimized visual intrusion by controlling the visibility of parking, storage, other outdoor services. Minimize glare from headlights, things like the screenings they talked about. Minimize lighting intrusion, um, the, way the, the way the lights are, are focused. Minimize unreasonable departure from the character and scale of building in the vicinity as viewed from public ways. We look at how they've minimized contamination of the groundwater, and we look at their compliance and the provisions of the zoning bylaws, including parking and landscaping. So those are the things we want to look at during our site plan review process. And just to give you a heads up, the special permit has, I would say, sort of more leeway and one of its main goals is to determine that the benefits of the proposed use would outweigh its detrimental impacts on the town and the neighborhood in view of the particular characteristics of the site and of the proposal in relation to that site. So when you get to special permit, you start looking at social, economic, or community needs which are served by the proposal. You start looking at neighborhood character and social structures. You look at the impacts on the natural environment. And you look at potential fiscal impacts including impact on town services, tax base, and employment. So some of these things overlap a little, but there is some, some difference. So I just want people to know that as they make their remarks tonight. So we have a sign-up list on the edge of the table here for people who want to speak. So if you haven't signed up and you do want to speak, please come up and, and put your name there. We'll just go in order. And then there's also a list in the back of just anybody who's here tonight, because it's important for us to know, and for the, uh, the state, we have to report to the state on all public hearings. Um, no. You know, we don't force anybody to sign it, but we appreciate people signing in. The speaking list is over here. And so what we would ask is that people do come up. Um, I'll set the mic up on the corner of the table there. And if you can talk into the mic both for the people present here, but also for people on TV as well. And we do, just so you know, there's cameras in the back and on the side. So I think our, our FCAT person is getting all different angles. So in case that matters to you. Um. So let's put a, uh, a chair over and some people can sit or stand if they want to speak. Hello. Oh, good. Julie, you're uh, number one. Which part? Why don't we... Uh, don't we always say she's number one? Can we uh, move? Yeah, I want Julie to be able to come over here. Yeah. So you can sit or stand, but try to make it so uh, we can hear you, and that's not going to move in very much. Okay. Okay, I've got to remember my points because they grew as you were reading everything. I'm Julie Cavaco. I live on one North, 123 North Hillside Road. And you have to sit, people. Um, the, the first thing that strikes me is that I do think it's an unreasonable size for the neighborhood. Um, the, master plan, the master plan that we set up 10, 12, 13 years ago um, was very careful in its choice of the size of our buildings. Um, we had that survey of people in town. Um, and... Uh, I understand that a lot, a lot of our larger lots have been used by other businesses, but I just think that that size building on that lot, it really does affect the character of that neighborhood. It, um, and that's the first thing I'd like to say, and I'm probably going to forget the other things I did. <laughs> um, but that was my most important thing, so I would stick with that, that I really think that it affects the character of the neighborhood, that size and scope of that building. I... I'm not really understanding. You don't need to explain it because 
why the planning board cannot limit it on that reason alone, why they would then be able to approve it and then have it go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I think that the planning board um, should stand by that um, master plan that we came up with in those guidelines, and um, I think um, that would be really good. The other thing, in terms of the clearing of the land that was mentioned in that last part you um, brought up, the thing I would suggest is that um, these uh, well-spoken gentlemen to my right did talk about how that they've been involved with this project for a year. And so, um, although the current owner might have made um, the decision to clear cut the lot on a weekend when people were, um, whatever, not paying attention, um, is I think a d direct result to the connection of the potential purpose um, sale of the lot. And um, granted, he may have jumped the gun and made a mistake, but I do think that the brunt of it does land on that year-long um, conversation they've been having with the company. So, thank you. Thank you. Could you maybe I, yeah. tell us who the next person is? Uh, Judy Tuckle. And I, just I, I do have a, a question about the relationship between the LLC and the owners. So the owners will sell it to the LLC when the project... Sorry. So my question is about the relationship between the owners and the LLC. So the owners will sell it to the LLC when the project is approved? Is that the just idea? Just so we're clear, you mean the owner of the property? The owners of the property, yep. That's correct, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's correct. And just quickly, because there is a quick response to the, I think Julie had a question about that in our zoning bylaws, section 2230, um, in commercial one and two, and there's a map on the wall where that is, um, retail sales, um, with or without display outdoors, a building greater than 4,000 square feet or less, uh, up to 30,000 square feet, um, is allowed by special permit. So those are our bylaws, and I know the plan you were talking about gave guidance to the bylaws, but the bylaws, that's what they have, that's what they remain. So, so you can turn down a special permit? We can't. That's, as, as I explained, that's the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and I would, just to let people know, that retail sales of a building greater than 30,000 square feet, up to 60,000, is allowed by special permit in C2, in Commercial 2. So you have to go to the map and see where that's allowed. We're always open to changing the bylaws. That's what the Planning Board can also do. So I just put that out there as a notification. But not, not, uh, not tonight. We can't. But not, on a, not on a current project, though. Right. Not on a, once a project has started its application, it's under the given bylaws. And plus, bylaws have to go to, to be changed. They have to go to annual town meeting and get a majority there. So. I'm Judy Cundell, 22 Lee Road. People hear me. I sent you a letter, and I won't bore you by repeating everything that was in there. I would just like to make a couple of points. One is that commercial development of that corner at Mill Village and Greenfield Road is a big change for the town of Deerfield. As you can tell by the number of people who are here tonight and they didn't all come in just for the air conditioning. <laughs> um, I want to say that um, Dollar General is a very sophisticated applicant. They've spent, they've told us they've spent a year in uh, analyzing the site, developing their plans. The town of Deerfield is a small town. We do not have the benefit of a professional planning department or engineer that can review the plans that they have submitted. So one of my basic suggestions is that the town use the provisions in the bylaw to have experts review the plans at the expense of the applicant. In addition, um, I think the town should use those provisions to request some input from the town council. One of the issues that I just heard tonight was a statement that the reduction in parking is by waiver and not by special permit. I have my zoning bylaws that I printed from the website, so maybe they're not up to date, but it says 3120, reduction of parking requirement by special permit. The planning board may, by special permit, reduce the number of parking spaces. So 
where waiver comes in, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not a legal expert with regard to the bylaws. I think that's one issue that probably the town council should look at. The other issue that I think the town council should look at is the, the frontage, the access issue. As you can see on the plan, the parcel itself does not directly abut onto the paved and traveled way that's Greenfield Road. It goes over a parcel of land that's owned by somebody else, Commonwealth of Massachusetts, maybe. Is that okay? I don't know, and I think I think it's important enough that we should have uh, a legal opinion. Um, the town did have the benefit of uh, a letter from Deborah Dacius, who was the director of planning in the ta town of Agawam for 30 years before she retired. She's, she just did a quick look at the submissions, the plans back there, of what um, the Dollar General people have submitted. She raised a number of questions. That is one that she raised as well. So I think it's an important issue. The other um, issue for me has to do with whether it's special permit or waiver. And these people have asked for a reduction in the number of parking spaces. But as far as I can see, they have not provided any facts or information other than their own opinion that they don't think they'll need the full number of parking spaces on which you can legitimately make a decision that the 30 parking spaces are adequate. So they really should be required to uh, do a traffic study or provide some facts and information on which you can legitimately make that finding. And uh, that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you, we did get your letter, appreciate it. Just, I, I, I think we might have mentioned this before, but those of you who have attended other planning board meetings, we don't usually get a crowd like this, so I'll just let you know that um, we often do hire technical experts, and it is at the applicant's expense, and uh, I'd be... We call it peer review. Likely, uh, it's likely that we will uh, request peer review for at least, uh, certainly the stormwater, because um, that gets very detailed when it gets into uh, stormwater issues. And then often, um, Traffic is another thing and any other environmental impacts. Um, and we, we do uh, look for more data that the uh, peer review people get. That's a third party. And we have a list of, of that. So maybe we'll get to that tonight, too, to discuss. Respectfully, through the chair, is it OK if I clarify a couple of points? Because there were a couple of things that were noted that I'd just like to Yeah, it might on. help going forward. So no, they, they, were, they were good feedback and good points and a couple of things just for clarification. Um, relative to the waiver request, um, we were advised by staff that a special permit was not required by the planning board. If, if it's found that a special permit is required for the parking space reduction, and that's what we all determine is the appropriate vehicle for the parking space reduction request, we're happy to do that. We were told it was a waiver um, from staff as part of our initial application. That being said, if the special permits are out to go, we're happy to do that. All right. And just on that, um, I, sh I should have introduced earlier, Patricia Smith is here from the Franklin Regional Council of Government, and she's been our advisor on a lot of different projects, and that's the kind of thing that she certainly knows those rules and will catch those kind of things. Um, as, as well as Diana um, Schindler from the town, do you, are you, are you an official title? Uh, yeah, I'm just working as a consultant. All right. But um, has worked in many other towns and is, is also helping us on this. So they'll probably be okay. the ones that want, at once it, at, after this public hearing, we'll kind of get that relationships who you, who you should talk to more. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Uh, um, related to the parking request too, what I, what I neglected to mention as part of this national application is that we had provided a, a document which summarized our anticipated trip generation from a traffic perspective. It's the same document that DOT would require us to provide in support of our driveway permit application. And what that document does is assesses the trips to the facility that would be expected to be generated during the peak hours of operation. That document, I expect that your peer review consultant will take a look at it and provide some commentary on it. Generally speaking, what that document does not do, though, it does not account for the fact that this particular use is not uh, what most would refer to as a destination, and that people are not leaving where they're at to go here to then go back. This is more of a convenience use, um, which is often referred to, the technical term would be kind of pass-by traffic, where 
you're going from A to B, this just happens, or you're going from A to C, this just happens to be B on your normal route of travel. Um, so it's not a big generator of traffic. All that said, we'll get into that with DOT. Right, and I would let people know that the, one of the other things planning boards look at when something is being constructed is we, we don't know the future. And so once something's built, it might change use. And so we have to, that's partly why we have a, a parking requirement, not totally based on the use that's going to be there day one necessarily, but other potential uses. Um, so that's something we'll look at when of, we get into of that. Of course. Issue as well. and like I mentioned, we can accommodate the requisite number of spaces if we all deem that's appropriate, and it won't affect our application. No, she's going to get the list of speakers there. Oh, okay. Another item, just as a point of clarification, and I had the same reaction when we were looking at the survey initially. The large area in front of our site that might look like an additional property is actually the right-of-way for the road, and it's owned by the state. And everybody's frontage, including the property next to us, I'll go ahead and look at it. Everybody who fronts on that road, a driveway would have to go across that right-of-way. It's part of the state's permitting process. It's not, I mean, they control the property, but it's on a separate parcel, so to speak. It's just, in this case, the right-of-way happens to be really, really wide. Next up, um, Tim Hilshi. You don't have to re re rewrite that. Just make that part of the minutes, or make that part of the... Well, I just put their comments down next to their name. Oh, I've changed that's what they grow easy. Um, I'm Tim Hilchey, 330 Greenfield Road, um, probably about three miles. Tim Hilchey, 330 Greenfield Road. I'm approximately three miles from the site of this uh, proposed project. Um, I just want to second the point that uh, another woman made about the clear cutting, and it does seem like there's a, a relationship that exists for a year between the proposed, um, the group that's proposing this project and the, the landowner, so it, I, I find it difficult to accept that there's a separation between the clear cutting and the project. Um, I wanted to ask um, if there are existing properties in town that are both A, vacant, um, listed as commercial spaces, have existing parking, have egress and access, have existing lighting, um, stoplights and, and so forth, where a store like this could be placed without disturbing this parcel of land. Thank you. I think some, some questions we're going to be able to answer quickly here tonight. Other questions are more, I think, comments, and then we'll get, you know, get back to it. Paul, next. Bill Morapaz, is that right? Marapisi. Marapisi. The only Italian is... <laughs> so, uh, Bill Mayor, PC 16, Captain Lathrop Drive. There was something said earlier, um, uh, and I'm glad. I'm glad that our soil is not wonderful <laughs> for this type of development. Um, and there's a real important reason for that. Within three miles of this proposed site, there's a super Cumberland Farms going in. There is a Yankee Candle building. There is other development up and down Greenfield Road. And then there's stormwater drainage. If we allow this continued development, I don't think the 100-year storms are just once in 100 years. And we saw that last week. So I really do think we need to, we need to look long and hard at our water table and whether we can have another store, whether it's a destination or not, within our town. Thank you. Paul, can, can you Sure, go ahead. Jane Treasure. Hello, my name is Jane Treasure. I don't live right near here. I live in the center of uh, South Deerfield. I live in a C1 area, by the way. Um, 
Uh, and I'm, my concern as I'm looking at this plan, forgive me for not looking at you, I'm looking at the plan, okay, is um, you spoke about this um, truck delivery, and I'm particularly concerned for the neighbors. Well, this is the street, so it's the neighbors right here. I would really have liked to see a, a, a light outline of where the closest house is. And um, considering what happened to the neighbors on Thayer Street when we built the um, DPW building, I want to ask you about these trucks and what exactly happens when a truck comes in it has to back up to this building, so now we get the beep, beep, beep stuff, right? And we have the lights facing this way to the houses. I really think it's incumbent upon you to indicate where these houses actually are. Uh, you have a large plot in the back and a very close proximity to a border on the right. It occurred to me that you might have found a better place to have that truck accessing and perhaps wrapping around the whole building and exiting out without ever having to go backwards. Um, so, to be precise, there's a big triangle. Maybe that's a better place for your trucks to play around. I really don't understand what the proximity is to your neighbors, but it looks very close. So therefore, why not have your delivery back there? Because across the street, up to the southwest, up to the top left corner, is in fact a, a little industrial complex. It's the, what is that thing out there? Yeah, distribution center, okay. So to have your trucks in that direction, rather than on the residential side, seems to be a much friendlier notion, and to find a way to go in and out without your beep, beep, bing, bing, and your lights not facing any of the residential buildings right there. I just went and took a little tour today to see how close everything is. It's close. Um, I'm sure there are lots of other people who are going to carry and take care of all the other questions. Thank you. Thanks. Just, just quickly, because I know you do have some buildings outside of uh, the neighboring uh, uh, structures. Can you tell us, are there others? Sure. Um, what would be helpful? I can put up an aerial of uh, the property. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Susan Hoff. Oh, who's this guy? I don't know. It says Susan Hoff next. I don't know who that is. Susan Hoff and then Kathleen. Is it? I don't know. He didn't sign in, I guess. I just have one. Well, just, excuse me. He's going to just tell us where some, oh, other, oh, some other buildings are. Okay. So um, just for general context, loading is probably right in here. Everybody can see that. Our nearest neighbor is that home that I'm circling there. And our program probably comes back in this general vicinity, maybe a little further forward than I'm showing there. We were considering that. So one, the way the vehicle will come in, if you can picture the site, it will come in off the driveway right about here somewhere, pull in this way with the lights facing the Yankee Candle distribution facility, quickly back in to here, and then pull out and leave. That wasn't by accident. We actually thought about the way headlights wanted to be. The alternate to flipping that would have headlights kind of either facing in this direction and coming across the field. Or, or things of that nature. And with this being our closest neighbor, we pulled it as far forward as possible. There's obviously a fair amount of room to that back corner in there. So we have the, the screen fence, which we're going to pull up much tighter, provided we don't need to add additional parking spaces. But we were thinking about that in terms of loading. Now, the suggestion where we go around the perimeter of the building or put loading in the back corner there, I, I'd suggest just my opinion that, that might be more invasive to our neighbors than kind of a more compact footprint. All right, All right thank you. That's, that's helpful to see around it. How about the map? We, we, out? we have, I think he, he mentioned that. He backs in and pulls out. 
So we have a, hey, we have yeah, a, did you sign up on the speakers? What? Did you sign up on the list? I did not. Can you, can you sign up on the list? We're going in order here. Yeah. And I think there's a, uh, Susan Hoff was the next one who signed up. Can, can, would you mind letting other people speak first or? One quick question. Are you okay with this? Uh, I'm good. Okay. Susan, are you all right? The traffic pattern. What's your name, please? Ken Cornoyer. Thank you. 15A Mill Village Road. Excellent. And I'm concerned about a traffic light, if there's going to be one or not, and about the, the lanes. Are they going to be left-turn lanes to get into the property? Because otherwise, it's going to be a mishmash. So, so that's excellent comments. That's, we will take that into consideration. Okay, that's I, I don't, my only concern. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. I'm Susan Half. I live 11B Mill Village Road. Uh, I have a number of concerns. I think you can hear me, can't you? Yes, nobody has trouble hearing me. Um, <clears throat> I am concerned about the traffic on Deerfield Greenfield Road uh, that is already a dangerous corner. I have one neighbor who had a total crash uh, on that corner within this year, uh, and there have been others. I hear the, I hear the brakes squeal. Uh, it's uh, allegedly a 45 mile, and no, it's a 50 mile zone right there, and people go at least 50 miles an hour on that corner. And I believe that we need some kind of turning lane, some sort of flashing light, something. If it can't be a stoplight, it, it's some kind of warning. In addition, um, when you were pointing out the change in the uh, agreement or your proposed agreement on the fence next to your nearest neighbor, what came to my mind is I assume that the land on the neighbor's side of the fence will still be owned by the company. Do we have any assurance that that piece of pie, that little bit of land, is going to be maintained or is that going to become a jungle? There are other things, but that's enough for me. Thank you. So your concern is the, the upkeep of the landscaping in that top. Got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you lose? No, he still has it. Oh, yeah. Okay, the next one is to move along. Steve <laughs> is uh, Kathleen Watroba. And who comes after Kathleen? Then after Kathleen Watroba is Stephen Pistrich. Thanks. Hello. My name is Kathy Watroba, and I live on 18th Air Street. Um, our neighborhood was pretty heavily impacted by the um, development of the town garage. Uh, it affected us morning, noon, and night, and continues to more so in the wintertime than, than now. Um, there are, there's a fence, there are trees, there's a large concrete wall, and on our property, there's a large double bay 15-foot garage, and it is not enough of a buffer. So the fence and the greenery and the proximity to that home, um, it's, it's, just, it's just not enough. It's not enough. I think that we as a community have a responsibility, an opportunity and a responsibility first to our citizens before big business, before corporate America. I'm a little curious, um, how large is the sign, the Dollar General sign? Do we know? Actually, that is something I don't think you mentioned. Could you answer? Do you yeah, have sure. um, that's you mind if I just go check the plans? I don't know that number offhand. I that's believe I have it in the details. 16 square feet, I think, usually. I mean, we have, we have well, signed bylaws, actually. Yeah. Um, so it would have to be, be within. more than a sheet of a plywood. It can't be more than 16 square feet. I think feet, I mean, the, the intent is that it's going to comply with the bylaw, but I can go see if I have a detail in the plans, if that's helpful. 
Well, I mean, I just we'll think if it's if it's a 16 foot sign, but you have an eight foot fence to abut the property to the homeowners, I think it's a little telling that you have a larger sign that says we're Dollar General. It should be the other way around. You should have a 16 foot fence to protect the neighbors from this sort of intrusive It's not 16 building. feet high, it's 16, it's 16 square, square feet. feet. 16 square feet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 32 square feet. Fair enough. Well, there's two of them can be have built, but each one is 16 square feet. I, I, I mean, I just don't know within the bylaws yeah. where the citizens and the value of their property and the quality of their life come before someone's business. I, I think we have a responsibility to that. I mean, at least with the town garage, um, you know, it is for the community. Um, it serves a purpose for all of us, and it's a, a necessarily a necessary element of the town. Um, but it isn't without its intrusiveness um, on our life and our quality of life, and, and quite frankly, even possibility of the value of my home. So I think those are considerations we need to take for, for the other uh, members of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Pistridge. Why don't you say who's up and who's next? Stephen Pistridge and Laurie Busada. Hi. My name is Stephen Pistrich, live on Seven River Road. I can't see this from my house. But it concerns me, because I live in Deerfield. Um, you said that the planning board is concerned with the character of the town. Um, one thing I want to say is that Route 5 is a significant welcome corridor to Deerfield. It is how most tourists approach this town and that's probably all they ever drive on. They go between significant sites of, let's say, Yankee Candle on one end and historic Deerfield on the other. You go between these, you see, a, yes, there are a number of businesses. Almost all are in bus buildings that look like houses, barns. There's one that looks like a church. There's um, only one flat roof building I can think of. It's the Volvo dealership. But that's sort of more of like a modern architecture thing, sort of. But this is the, would be the only, what I would call, strip mall architecture building in, on that strip there. And I think it would be sort of a poor choice to integrate that into the community in that area. We have, yes, we have some new self-storage units, but they built a, an office building that looks actually surprisingly like a house with 12 over 12 windows and tiled roof, and they're doing other landscaping stuff. And, they're trying to you know, alter its visual impact. This basically looks just like a basic flat metal strip mall building and is very out of character with the rest of the town. Um, I think it would be a bad precedent to show that you would allow this in that strip because then there would be no stopping others being built soon. Um, then we have the issue of the illegal tree cutting that everyone's talked about. Now, I think that that's very important here because if the boards ignore that and turn their backs to this, pretend it never happened or claim that it's not their jurisdiction or other crap like that, it just means that um, this will be condoned and then it will happen again. And it will just, you know, this is just, again, another bad precedent to set. This should be clearly identified as a improper act and it should negate any special permits or any permits at all for this project because it's obviously just smells bad. Um, and in general, I think, I think there's a sense that, um, I'm wondering who actually here actually wants the Dollar General in Deerfield? Do you want to raise your hand? Who here actually opposes it? Would you raise your hands? No, there's a vote. <laughs> it's Pretty clear your constituents don't want this garbage in our town. Thank you very much. Next. Laurie Busada and Darren Gray on deck. Laurie Busada, 193 North Main Street, South Deerfield. First of all, thank you, um, Planning Board, for spending your time serving our town. Um, I know your compensation is quite high. 
I, I, um, I appreciate also that you spent a year on this. I believe that you are well paid um, in this work. I just want to bring to the attention of people who haven't seen some of the articles I've been reading recently. Dollar General is expanding like rabbits. They have uh, stores within 10 miles of each other in North Carolina, I've heard, and in Vermont. Um, in some of the tiniest towns in Vermont, there is a proposal in Cummington right now, population 800, a neighboring town, Plainfield, population 600. So I know that this might be also um, in the purview of special permit, but I just want to say clearly, and I think others here agree, that um, all politics is local and all economies is, are local. And if, how goes South Deerfield? If we just lay down and be bulldozed over, then so goes the world. We've opened the gates. We are working hard in this community to support local farmers and local businesses like Cheslick's Market, like Bittersweet Bakery, like Thayer Street Market. And we cannot honestly support them if we bring in an international firm shipping goods from all over the world. It's also a climate change issue. And I think it's, we, we should, we are strong enough, we are informed enough that we should take a stand. We need to protect the rural, historic, agricultural, environmental beauty of this town with our state park, Mount Sugarloaf, and our beautiful Deerfield River. So that said, um, in case Dollar General were to complain at any point about the number of experts, we would like to review the plans. Uh, we had just collected a few names um, just to support your effort in being thorough. Um, the stormwater, the size of the basin on the plans doesn't seem nearly adequate to deal with the asphalt and the roof. There are red maples that were cut down. Those red maples are no longer absorbing water. There is a stream and wetlands in the back of the Evans Lane property and the condominium complex. There is um, wet areas back there. So I uh, would like to have a wetland scientist do a formal study of the soils and the drainage and the stormwater basin there, and I also second the issue on traffic. I ride my bike on that road every day to work and back, and there is no side, what's the word I'm looking for? Shoulder. shoulder. There is no shoulder. Um, it's a residential community on Mill Village Road. Where do the kids biking from Mill Village Road to get their soda and their hot Cheetos how do they get into the store? Is there a back entrance? Are they expected to come out and take a turn onto the highway and get into opposing traffic in order to get into the store? Um, I'm very concerned about si uh, signage also, and also would like us to have Adam Costa look through the case law. Um, if you probably can find, you know, 20, 30 towns at this very moment that are having this exact same hearing. And I think we need to look at the impact that it's having on our rural economy, not just here, but in the entire region. And um, I would like us to look at case law in addition to just the, the letter of the zoning. Thank you. Thank you. Karen. Aaron Gray and then Peter Crowley. Crowley. Hi, my name is Darren Gray. I live on Captain Lathrop Drive. Uh, I'm a civil engineer, certified civil engineer. I worked in land development for years. I don't anymore. I worked on a lot of retail development, all sorts of things, but definitely spent some time doing retail. Um, just to touch on what some other people said, the architectural elevations, I think that's very valid. I've certainly been in hearings where I've been asked to adjust the elevations, certainly something that towns commonly do. I agree with that comment. Uh, the previous woman with the pedestrian access from the side roads, I thought that was a great comment, safety-wise. Um, I spent some time reviewing the drawings and the application. Um, the traffic memo I took some issues with. 
It uh, qualifies the business as a variety store. It's been called a retail store here. It's been called a pharmacy. I visited Dollar General's. There is a corner of them that looks like a variety store. There's a corner of them that looks like you know, a pharmacy. There's also a large swath of it that looks like a little Walmart. This is definitely a retail establishment. Um, trip generation, they included the uh, trip generation for weeknights and weekday mornings. Uh, they didn't include anything with buses. They didn't include any counts. But they left out weekend peak hour, which is, I found kind of insulting as a fellow engineer to see that left out. That's common knowledge, peak hour of the week. And I can't understand how that would be left out of a memo and signed by a PE, personally. Um, so even given the uh, characteristics of the memo or the, the business represented in the memo, came up with 64 trips per hour as a peak. They state in there that ITE recommends, I state it's a recommendation, not a requirement, that at 100, you should get a full traffic memo done. Um, this property is on the DOT GIS system. What is the wording here? A top crash location, this intersection. It's a, uh, go on mass, go on DOT, look up top crash locations, this one comes up. So the. The comments we're hearing here tonight about observations with the turn lanes and the accidents, and, and someone died there in recent years at that intersection. Um, so these aren't you know, in just uh, mere observations. This is experience. Uh, it's it's um, backed up by that top crash location. Um, I think that needs to be taken very seriously. My recommendation to the planning board is a full traffic report with traffic counts, including buses. Have those been brought up at other meetings here or what was kind of a meeting, right? Um, <laughs> But I think that should be a, definitely be a requirement. Um, let's see. And then, when you say when you say that, are you talking about like what school buses are in the? Yes, in that's the a, that's another thing I've had commonly required is include buses in your counts. You get your traffic counts, you get your turning movement counts, all of that. So I mean, this all comes back to uh, the recommendation for you know peer review for stormwater qual for stormwater. They took a lot of. Uh, Borings and the boring information was in the application package. Mm -hmm. They mentioned tonight that there were also uh, deep hole test pits done. I didn't see any information from those in the application. Um, so what deep hole test pits can't tell you is your seasonal high groundwater. You can't get a good indication of it. You have to dig a deep hole test pit. You can tell by the soil modeling where your seasonal high groundwater is. There's a requirement with infiltration basins. You have to have a certain separation. I can't remember the, the distance, maybe 18 inches maybe. You have a certain separation required from the bottom of your infiltration basin to seasonal high groundwater. Otherwise, it's not going to perch into the ground. So that was uh, missing. I don't know if it was ever taken, but if I was an engineer out there and doing deep hole test pits, I certainly would have taken note of it, and it didn't make it into the application. Um, the trees. So the landowner got their initial application. I went. I got all the DOT records on the, the, uh, on the permits for the DOT. And I did submit a memo. I'm kind of you know, restating some of what I had in the memo. But it was an initial application in 2014 for the, with the DOT for a curb cut permit for a driveway access. It says right at the top. I mean, right at the top. This is good for 12 months from data by issuance. Can't miss it. I was kind of impressed with the landowner for what a detailed good job they did in the application materials. Not what I'd expect out of a landowner, to be honest. Um, it also says you can't do work on this land unless you notify us. And so the applicant or this section of the applicant team, because I consider the owner to be part of the applicant team. Mm -hmm. This part of the applicant team entered into a, a, um, a land deal agreement in January of 2018 with the landowners. Um, as was mentioned earlier, land deals are commonly have uh, contingent. They're contingent on things. You're contingent on getting your approvals in place. You can be contingent on anything you want it to be. You're, just, you're making your own deal up. People agree or they don't. Um, but the trees were cleared after that land deal was agreed to, signed, signed, uh, authorization pages in the application as well. I, I just can't even fathom in my mind why a landowner who already has a land deal in place would ever clear an acre of trees on abutting land if it wasn't a requirement or somehow leveraged by the rest of the application team. Um, it really bothers me. Um, so I know that's not under the planning board's purview, but stormwater is. And so you change, you take the trees down, you change the runoff, character, runoff characteristics of that land. Um, of course, there's the view aspects which people have talked about as well, which, which uh, Chairman Waite, you mentioned earlier, is being under the purview. But that's certainly been drastically impacted. 
but I would uh, highly recommend that the drainage report be updated to include those changes, and it doesn't necessarily just have to be that parcel. They've impacted more. They should include more. Um, and I don't know if they're going to have the capacity when they include groundwater separation with air infiltration. But um, I think that's, I think that's it for tonight. So thank you. I'd like to thank Darren. He uh, gave us a detailed uh, written report of what he just commented on also, so we definitely appreciate that. And I failed to mention Lori also submitted something in writing, so we appreciate that. Okay, uh, next one is Peter Cowley, followed by Tolly Stark. Good evening. My name's Peter Cowley, and um, we're a Butters to this proposed site. We own the Rock Fossil Dinosaur Shop and a dwelling, um, 213 Greenfield Road. Um, we were never contacted that this was going to happen at the beginning. We were never contacted at the first meeting. We, we heard it through the grapevine. Actually, we came back one day and everything was torn down. Now, <clears throat> mind you, the, the site plans up there still have the old owner on them. And we've owned the place two years, paid the taxes for two years. Something's not right there. <clears throat> I want to know why we weren't contacted and how it might affect our business that my wife is striving to make perfect. The stormwater issue, there's already stormwater coming down. There is a drain right there. Just because they put in this system doesn't mean it's going to work. Engineers know that, but they do it anyways. Um, as far as it's a seasonal business that we have, what about security? How is that going to affect our, when it's open till 10 o'clock, we already see people parking their vehicles, doing their drug deals or whatever it is, right on the side of the road in our parking lot one day we found a van. How is this going to affect us as far as security, and how are we going to be able to protect ourselves from lowlifes coming in to get there, whatever. I'm not saying the people coming into the store, but it is an avenue for bad things. Are the, the town, I noticed, doesn't have many policemen. We called on them one day. There was one officer on duty. I don't know how the guy can handle it. That's another issue for everything here. But... Um, <clears throat> I think, as a comment, I, I think the size and the, and the type of building for that site does not go with the community architecture. I feel real bad for the abutting neighbors that have these beautiful condominiums and are going to have to look at that. And then when they do decide to sell, they're not going to get their top dollar that they should. <clears throat> There's already dollar, gen or dollar stores eight miles north, eight miles south, and all around. I don't, I just don't get it. And I love this town. And, you know, we, I, I'd even think of moving up here. But if this kind of stuff is going to be the way, the direction it's going, I, I don't know. Why can't you have a special town vote? Why wouldn't the people know a year and a half or two years ago when they started to decide to do this, if there was a town vote then, I'm sure it would have been... All hands up. I don't know the politics in the town and how it actually works, but that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Tolly Stark, followed by Nicholas Arsenal. Orsenal? Orsini? Okay. I'm sorry? Oh, you want to sign it? Oh, okay, yeah. Come on. Good evening. My name is Tolly Stark. I live on Keats Road. I just want to lend my voice um, to some of the other concerns that I've heard from people in the room. One is, of course, the tree cutting issue, and also that um, 
it seems to show that there's definitely a lack of integrity going on between landowner and applicants um, to have such things occur um, in the community and also on the DOT property. Um, the concerns of the stormwater runoff, I think, is also a very valid concern, so I'm going to reiterate that point as well. Um, and so the building not being character with our town. Um, also, it doesn't sound like it's very um, ecologically sound or have any real green principles other than putting in LED lights. Um, so that's another thing to consider. Um, the lack of access for bike and pedestrian was also a very good point as well. Um, and there was also questions um, about how high would the sign for the Dollar General be, and I haven't heard anyone speak to that yet. And will there also be an additional sign closer to 5 and 10, or is it only the sign that will be hanging on the store itself? Um, also, I myself have great concerns about the traffic infrastructure and the risk at that intersection. Um, as I said at the last hearing, there are also families that are commuting their children to school that turn um, right across the road onto North Main Street there to go to Pleasant Street to bring their children to school in the morning. I see buses there as well. Um, it is already, as um, someone else has pointed out, a top crash site. And that's really a grave concern for us trying to get our kids safely to school. And the last thing that I wanted to mention was about a climate change study that's been done for the town of Deerfield, um, looking at our trees, the canopy of the trees, and having more resilient trees. That's something that I know our town has been striving for and trying to make progress in. And I haven't heard any talk about, um, especially after just clear cutting all this land with no assessment or minimal impact, about how we plan to address that so that we can be a resilient community in that way. Um, and then there's also, of course, the economic resilience that I think is very important to consider um, with our local businesses and how this is going to impact them as well. And that's all for tonight. Thank you. Nicholas Orsini and then Elissa Clement. So Nicholas Orsini, landowner of uh, 34th Air Street. Um, I feel like I'm kind of beating a dead horse at this point because uh, it's been brought up so many times. But uh, with the tree cuttings, um, the tree cutting happened after their submission for application. So I don't know how they point the finger at, oh, it was the landowner. It had nothing to do with us. They submitted their application prior to that being cut, so they knew well into it what was going on. Um, the parking spaces that they're looking to have reduced, um, they've stated that the Dollar General is going to be a client of their facility, and that client can back out of their lease at any point in time, so we should take this as being a high-traffic retailer, because they could be renting to L.O. Bean, they could be renting to whomever, and we're not just looking at Dollar General's traffic, we're looking at whatever this might be in the future. Um, so they're, you know, the use doesn't matter because as they stated, it's a rental property for the Dollar General, it's not where they own it. Um, and also, I'm assuming since their application was submitted back in April, that all of their water drainage data happened prior to that as well, um, which the trees came down after the fact. So all that information is void in my opinion because as stated, it doesn't account for the fact that there's now not trees there soaking up some of that water. That's all I got for now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Alyssa Clement and Ken Coran, is it? Hi, um, Elissa Clement, Forby Evans Lane. Thank you. Oh. Elissa Clement, Forby Evans Lane. So, um, so I'm in a butter, obviously. Um, I, I have a bunch of points to make, so I'll try to quickly go through those. 
Um, the first one was I did want to revisit about the tree clear cutting. Uh, I noticed you mentioned the plans were submitted on April 20th. The clear cutting occurred on April 28th. I think that's quite a significant correlation there. Um, it was, as a neighbor, I can say for our neighborhood, the clear cutting was quite devastating. Um, there were people in tears. We started looking at houses to move, not knowing if we'd be able to sell our place, how this would affect our property values. Not only this, but the potential Dollar General. Um, and of course, moving is difficult because there's very little available in Deerfield and we can't make our kids leave their friends and leave the schools. Um, but this has completely changed our home and I don't think anyone can argue that it hasn't changed the character of that neighborhood. Um, sorry, I have quite a few things. <laughs> Let's see. Um, the landscaping plan is, has been very vague. The plans that I've seen have very few trees on just in little groupings of three on our side of the fence. And I don't want to feel like I'm in a prison where there's this big fence next to us. I'd like that whole fence to have trees along it. There was, um, and I really don't know what the current plan is because it's been very vague. Um, there was a lot of mention about how they met with the butters and considered our input. However, I can say this abutter was not invited to this meeting. Um, and I would, uh, well, I won't speak for others. <laughs> Um, let's see, the last time, as, uh, going to the trucks, um, the last time we were told there would be one truck once a week during the day. Now there's mention of additional vendor trucks. I'd like to have a more solid idea of what we're really looking at with that. Um, and also, I, I thought it was a good point about the trucks being so close to the residential area. Um, last time I had even, actually, the, after the informal meeting, I spoke with the two gentlemen there after the meeting and even asked, because they were asking for input, I did mention that it looked like things could be scooted over, well, now it's a different drawing, but scooted over a little bit, a little bit further from the neighborhood, and it doesn't look like um, that's occurred. It, it does, uh, I feel like it's quite close to the boundary there. Oh, I feel like it's quite close to the boundary. And it doesn't look like they considered that feedback. Um, okay, the stormwater basin. I'm very concerned about that because I can tell you, since we live there, I know that that corner, that area, is a very wet and mucky consistently. So I'm very concerned about how the reduction of the trees, the asphalt, everything is going to, how that little area is going to handle all this additional stormwater. Um, I also, I haven't heard a good answer on the traffic study. Um, you know, we've heard that it's a top crash site. There's insufficient infrastructure for the traffic, probably already, but it, certainly with additional traffic. Um, I'd like to know, to have a solid answer on what's gonna happen with a traffic study for that, and who's gonna pay if there's a traffic light needed. And um, finally, I'm concerned about if this business does not succeed, what will happen when we have an abandoned building practically in our backyard? Um, and if you might consider a bond or something to cover the... Um, the, the concern cost. is that of a, if the building is abandoned, who then... What, what does the town do with this property, or is, it any, is there any... What concern can the, how can the town manage that concern? That's what you're saying, yeah. right? And just all the consequences to having this abandoned building sitting there and everything that comes with that, if that were to happen. And I do feel like, given the opposition to the business, I am concerned about whether it would succeed, and I feel that's a real possibility. Okay. Um, I think that's everything. Thank you. <laughs> Thank good. you so much for hearing me on. Thank you. Good point. Um, Ken, I can't read the name. Is it Koran? 15, 15A Ville Village Road? Oh, here he is. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. Gotcha. 
Okay, uh, then Phil Hayes, and then Amy Grayson Schwartz. Is that right? Can we go back to the original diagram? I want to start out by saying I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, so bear with me. But <laughs> I'm a naturally suspicious person, and when they talked about those parking spaces and how willing they were to give them up, the thoughts started going through my mind that maybe there are other reasons why they gave them up. And as I looked at the diagrams, I was thinking, if there's parking space there, does that make their storm lake undersized because of additional water running off? And I also said, you know, if there are trucks backing in there, those parking spaces might not even be usable. They might create their own safety hazard. So maybe, just maybe, they never really wanted those parking spaces in there. Additionally, my wife and I went on a great vacation between the last meeting and now up at Lake Ontario, and we drove toward a town called Sackett Harbor, New York, historic War of 1812 town. And on the way into town, we were with our friends the Gilmores, on the way into town, we drove by a Dollar General, right on the outside of town, and naturally slammed on the brakes and took pictures. <laughs> And my wife got busy on her phone looking up to see the history of that store. Turns out it opened in the fall of last year. It's a relatively new store. Turns out there'd been a dispute about it. Mostly abutters were against it. They didn't seem to get a lot of support because other people in the town thought the town needed the business. So it was built and we're looking at the fence along the north side exactly the same as this. And it had little bushes there that you could drive a semi through for one thing. And they didn't do a very good job of hiding the wooden fence, very tall wooden fence that was already deteriorating. And I have pictures, if anybody wants to see the pictures of that. But you know the other thing that we noticed? It's the exact same design as this. There are no parking spaces on the right-hand side. This is their plan. This is not something they gave up. This is their plan. My last point, my wife made me say it, she's keeping track of how many of the uh, flashing lights have been driven over or hit on that corner since the time we've been living in Deerfield. And she thinks, I have to say that. So I'm done. Thank you. Hi, Amy Gazen Schwartz. Um, I live on 3B Evans Lane across the street from Alyssa, across Evans Lane from Alyssa. So I'm in a butter. I'm also a member of the Board of Trustees of Mill Village East Condominium Association and an owner there, so I own the land that's abutting it, even if, though my house is not directly abutting. Um, I concur with what people have said about traffic. I concur with what people have said about the signs, about the size of the building being inappropriate for the lot. I'm, I'm grateful for all the other input that people have had. The engineering input was particularly useful. And I have another engineering type of question. So, let me just point to the map. This is the nearest house, but here, about here, and about down here, uh, maybe over here, are three large septic system leach fields. And so, my concern about the stormwater and the wastewater disposal is have the studies and will, what I hope is a future study, take into account that there are septic systems abutting this property that will be impacted by the increased runoff and the increased um, cover, land cover that is going to raise the groundwater level again. We installed those septic systems expecting to be able to use them for the life of their livelihood, but with increased water coming into it, that's going to impact the, the life of those septic systems. I have nothing else to add to what everybody else has said at the moment, but I hope that that will be considered in the, in the uh, engineering wastewater study. Thanks. Thank you. That's it. Is there anybody else who didn't sign up who would like to make a short comment? <laughs> yep. You can just come over and... Maybe stand over here and select like that Christmas contest. Especially if it's new information would be terrific. This is new. Um, one of the things I mentioned at an earlier meeting was, and I'd like to s consider this being included in the traffic sur um, survey, is I live over on North Hillside Road, and it's very common from people going from 
um, the Sunderland Bridge up to Greenfield to go on my street. And they fly by. It's 45, but they fly by on the straightaway. Um, and of course, no one pays attention to that because it's just a straightaway. Um, but what I perceive happening with a set of lights and that type of traffic at that location, just even going over that bridge, the increased traffic there, but I would propose that people are going to stop even going into South Deerfield and taking more North Main Street up, that they're going to then start diverting even more traffic on Hillside and North Hillside Road. Um, and so I would appreciate um, an understanding of how that road is used now and um, learning more about how that could be impacted. Um, and I also wanted to say that I think that it will impact the amount of people that go to town. You go to town, you get your coffee at this new store, and then you can keep on heading north. That's going to be an option that people won't want to use as much anymore because they have to deal with the traffic and the light further up. So I did write it down. Good points. Thank you. And they're new. Nobody else has signed in yet. I know. I, I said anybody who wants to can line up. Okay. Oh, but they should still. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can sign in. I just don't want to walk up there while you had yeah. it. So. I get you. Sorry. Okay, What's your name What's then? Your... My okay. name's Ruben Rappi. I live on 24 Kelly Drive. Ruben. He'll write. He'll write his name. Okay. Um, I just want to point out that I, you know, we've gone through this a couple times now, and and a lot of things seem rather vague. Um, we're talking about storm drains, erosion plans, but there's no finer details to a lot of those things. And maybe it might be too boring for all of us and whatnot, but I don't think that they're touching on finer points that may actually have an effect. Um, we talked about the operations and being, they would be done at 10, lights would be on for a half hour after that for the staff to leave. But what about like janitorial staff? How long, how late are they staying? Are the lights on then while they're cleaning the facility? What about stocking, you know, stock boys or whatever? Are they there during the day? Or are they there later hours of the night too? All of which lights need to be on at that point. So not just off at 1030. I'd like to know those things. We talked about the storm drain and it's going to, you know, hit on a 100 year storm. But define a 100 year storm. We just had two inches of rain. In South Deerfield, two inches of rain is a lot of rain. I watch my neighbor's yards flood pretty much every storm. Um, back to the traffic, and I hate to beat a dead horse as well. But things to consider are peak season. Peak season being from fall all the way past Christmas. It's an extraordinarily busy time. It's a tourist town. Something very much to consider, especially traveling between Yankee Candle, Historic Deerfield, and even Greenfield. The other thing is weekends, which somebody else brought up. One thing to really, really point out is Mill Village Road bumps into Stillwater Road. Stillwater Road is a highly tubed and toured area every weekend. And as you guys have seen maybe now, it's already starting to pick up. The Dollar General is going to be an absolute great place to stop, buy some cheap crap, and toss it later. And it's going to happen, 100%. The last thing I want to point out is, you know, again, we've talked about the storm drain, but I don't really think we've touched on like erosion. Um, Obviously, we have a swath of land there that's got a lot of vegetation on it. We're going to clear all that out, put a bunch of asphalt around it, create a drain system for this 9,000 square foot building to then go down some downspouts and hit that asphalt with some speed. I don't think a storm drain is going to be able to stop all of that. And that's something to just consider that there could be a fairly decent amount of erosion given the soil, you know, the, the components of the soil there to take a, take a look at. Um, I think that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Just so you, just so people know, we stormwater bylaws is a separate bylaw actually, and so it's very intense. We did it a few years ago. Um, I, I think it's a pretty good one. We will have an experts looking at it, and if you'd be happy to have you come to those meetings because we get into the details. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a, and also, and also they're really the, interesting. Also, the, the really stuff interesting. is online available. Section 179, right? 159. The, the, uh, the, the bylaws are. Yeah, but he wants to see their the plan, too. I see. So. Uh, good evening. My name is Bruce Hunter. I live at 103 CN Gully Road. I have two comments. Um, the first of which is the plan shows there is a drainage swale north of the proposed fence. So they're draining all the water to the north of 
their property through a swale to the Bloody Brook. That's where all that water ends up. It crosses five and 10, goes to the Bloody Brook. Secondly, the sign is the maximum of 30 feet. And it's located right at the edge of their property line at the driveway. And I believe it exceeds 16 square feet. It is lit and we should know how long that sign should be lit, will be lit, and um, what type of lighting there is. We we'll never discussed this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. We also got, I think you left us a detailed report also. Just uh, quickly regarding the signage, our, our general, um, Somebody's got it. Something. Yeah, I, I don't want to leave this meeting um, without saying that our general sign restrictions, section 3230 of our bylaws, says um, signs, announcements, or bulletin boards not exceeding 32 square feet in area are allowed in all zoning districts in connection with government, charitable, or religious uses. And then it goes on. They can be eight feet above the sidewalk. So we have a lot of restriction. We have a lot of detail in there. And I don't think that what we said tonight about 16 square feet was correct. Right? No, it says 32. Um, it's not correct? No, it's no. 30. It's uh, 32. That's each, for the two signs. Each, the, each no. face shall not each exceed 32 square oh, feet sorry. per okay. each face. Freestanding signs and support shall not exceed a height of 15 feet above average grade. So anyway, there's a lot of details in here. Um, and so that will be something that, at the next version of their site plan, we will look at. Um, but just so you know, you're probably looking at a lot of stores go to the maximum. So it'd be interesting to go look at what a 32 square foot sign looks like. Piece of plywood. Piece of plywood. Right. Yes. Yes, my name is Anna Lee Wolfkuhl. I live at Four Mountain Road. And I'll read from a letter that I just gave to the planning board. Um, at this time of celebrating our country's independence, we are reminded that we live in a nation and indeed a town that is structured on a system of representational government. Voters elect representatives to act on their behalf to make and interpret laws and regulations. The people of Deerfield are speaking to you, our elected representatives, through our presence here tonight as well as through petitions, letters, and phone calls. The overwhelming majority of us are telling you that we do not believe the proposed Dollar General store is in the best interests of our town. Deerfield has formal and informal proclamations on the type of community we believe we are. Realtors, businesses, and school officials promote those values to prospective residents, employees, and students. You, our elected representatives, are charged with honoring these sometimes ephemeral covenants just as strongly as you examine written laws on the books. Planning board approval for this project is essential. The opinion of the planning board also holds great weight with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Many building codes and regulations are subject to interpretation and our town's vision of who we are and how we want to live should hold just as much weight as those written rules, if not more. I fervently hope that you, as our elected representatives, will hear the voices of the people who elected you. Please vote against this proposal and urge the Zoning Board of Appeals to do the same. Thank you. So now we're, I've seen your face before here, so yeah. I'd just like to reiterate, really, we're, we're starting to hear some of the same things, so anything important and new information would be great, this but we do need to... This is a question based off of uh, things that they brought up previously at other meetings. Um, I want, because I didn't hear them specifically say that they still planned on connecting to the natural gas lines, um, even though they've brought it up in other meetings. Mm -hmm. And after speaking to someone in the natural gas company, 
they have stated the only way for a business to do something like this is to shut down usage along that same line and reallocate it to the new structure. So if they plan on connecting to this, where are they getting the usage from, number one? And if they are creating usage and allowed to do this, then there needs to be some stipulation that the moratorium be lifted in the town altogether. Thank you. Yes. You were talking about a Berkshire gas line, not a, you use the word natural gas. Some people have issues with whether it's really natural or not. Oh, but yes. Yeah. Berkshire yeah. gas. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Are you getting uh, Hi. Uh, names? Uh, yeah, is everybody signing up if you haven't? Thanks. My name's Heather Rillo. I live at 382 Lower Road, Deerfield. Um, I'm trying to get up to speed on planning. I'm really busy. I'm a business owner. I bought an existing 63-year-old business that was already cited so that I could keep it going, so that I could provide for my family in Franklin County. Um, in doing that, I sidestepped having to cut down trees and put a lot of pavement onto land that shouldn't be really paved. And then I discovered the joys of being a business owner. Um, what I didn't learn about is planning, so I just have a couple questions for you guys. Tonight, when I listened to Austin, he said a couple things, and I'm confused, and I want the planning board to hear why I'm confused. Because if I'm confused, I'm certain others are very confused. Um, Austin said it's going to be like a pharmacy without the pharmacy. I don't know what that is. Um, second of all, he said it's not a very big store. Third of all, he said our soil's not great. I beg to differ. Um, fourth, there are three other competitors within less than 10 miles two of which are owned by the same corporation in Greenfield. From this GPS coordinate where we are located right now, one is 7.4 miles, one is 8.6 miles, and the other one that's owned by a competitor over there is about 10 miles away. Um, those are cited in existing plazas for retail, first of all. So they didn't have some of the issues facing um, these two fellows over here. Um, I wanted to put out there to Austin that he might have been looking at the project for a better part of a year. I've been looking at this land for the better part of 53 years, and I personally feel like there's a better use for it. So Patrick, I'd be happy to help you brainstorm on what you could do with this property, because having come here, from a major metropolitan area for 20 years, I decided to move back to the valley because it has integrity, it has open space, it has neighbors who love each other and support each other, and it has an amazing planning board that's very concerned with our future here. We're choosing to be here. I feel like the choice with chopping down those trees shows a lack of vision, a lack of planning, a lack of discourse in the manner which I would like to conduct my business as a taxpayer in this town. The civil discourse around not talking to a butters, not taking into account their concerns, not notifying them of meetings, I personally am disgusted. Now, that begs the question, why would you guys do this? That's my planning question. What's the point if it's a little store, in fact, it's not very big, and it's like a pharmacy without a pharmacy? What's the point? That's my only question. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you very much. So what we're going to do now We've got two more people. is hear from two more people, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> no, you have more time. My name is Lorraine Herbert, and I own property on one B. One, I own property on one B Evans Lane. My question was um, in the context of we understand it is going to be a rental property as such. Do you have jurisdiction when the dollar people decide maybe that it is no longer a viable place? 
do you have jurisdiction who comes in next? Because they say eight to 10. The next people may say, we, we want to do a 24 hour thing. Will, do you have any jurisdiction over who the next renters will be? Because that certainly could alter quite a lot of the, the what goes on there and the things that are being discussed tonight. That was my question. Thank you, and that's, I mentioned that earlier, is why we don't look at this as just uh, what, what store might be there at first, but we look at it as a 9,000 square foot retail operation, and that's what they have to pass by this uh, site plan review. There's some limited things that the planning board can do. For example, hours of operation, that's in the town bylaws. Mm -hmm. So certainly that would have to get special permits or things like that if they were gonna go beyond that. But it's difficult, unless it's a change of use, it doesn't come back, I believe, to, uh, the planning board. So if we did this and it was retail, it could be a different retailer. But it, if it became a manufacturer, that's a change of use, it would have to come back to us. So, so the certain times it would come back, other times it, it wouldn't. So basically it would have to be maintained as some kind of small retail. Yes. Okay. Basically. Pat can clarify that a little bit more. Because that is an, it's an important point. So it is an important question, and one thing that can be done uh, by the ZBA in issuing a special permit for the use, it, it can be limited to a certain applicant at a certain location, so that if a subsequent business were to move into there, they would have to come back for another special permit. So that's one method that could be utilized. Yep. Thank you, John. Phil Ellard. 1947, went to school in this building. This is the basement. <laughs> Julie Kumaka will tell you we collected 600 signatures because we didn't want Berkshire Gas putting a huge plant right next to Magic Wing, right next to her kid's bedroom. How did we get to this point? We don't need it. We don't want it. It's not anything special. They're six miles up the road. They're seven miles down the road, as the gentleman said. There's a I don't know where you people are at because I'm not getting any feedback I like. That's why I came down here. <laughs> I'm part of the silent majority sitting at home saying, what the hell is going on? They're doing it again. So we kept virtually going to Thank you for your endorsement with the applause. But it's so important that we don't change Deerfield. This is a loophole these rascals got into. Cut the trees, cleared the land, messing with the whole place. And what's the end result? We don't know. As the other gentleman said, it could dissolve into a real mess anyway. But what's good up front? We're better than this. Thank you. Bill, is there new, new information? We kept big money out, McDonald's, because of a drive-up window. We didn't want rubbish blowing all over town and other fast food restaurants. Very careful. All these years protecting ourselves. I don't know how we got into this corner. I'm sorry that I had to jump down here and interrupt you people. It was going pretty good at the start, but. <laughs> Thank wanna, you. Is there anybody else? Thanks. John, I want a summation from you before we take any further steps at where this damn thing is going. I don't want it. Anybody else want to speak? Yep. Susan Half again from Mill Village Road. Uh, some of the thoughts while the uh, applicants were describing what they're going to do, um, part of it's been brought up. Well, we don't need those parking spaces. Um, it's a small store. It's a drive-by. It's not a destination. It sounds like something that is just built to fail. Um, we don't need we don't need the the truck driving up with the milk and the bread. We have organic, locally made bread at Atlas Farm Store, less than half a mile away. We have local milk at Atlas Farm Store, less than half a mile away. Thank you. Thank you. So what I'd like to do now is, uh, we, as I said, we had some people who wrote um, some comments, so I'd like to just make sure that's all on the record as well. Um, 
Like this one was someone guy. who spoke. Um, Looks like Julie. another guy, John. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, Sharon Morgan wrote a letter. Laurie Bouchard. Laurie, twice. Or maybe we just copied it twice. Um, Judith um, Kundi. Kando. Kando. She spoke already. Um, Kathleen Sylvester. No, I'm saying these are things that people, wrote, they wrote people that wrote to us. Oh, we'd be here. Uh, Deborah <laughs> Dacos. Dacos. Dacos, sorry. Dacos. Um, no, it, it's um, any new information. I mean, that's, we're going to look at that, too. Uh, it's a lot. I've read most of them, not all of them yet. It's, you guys did a great job tonight bringing up points. And then we also asked for requests for comments from town officials and boards. Conservation Commission said that they've previously uh, been consulted regarding wetland issues and there is a RDA decision on file for the site. Can someone help me with an RDA decision? What does that mean? Request for determination. Request for Applicability. So apparently they've already uh, looked in. There's no wetlands. And they. Yeah, so we're still getting. Um, but it was the decision of that. I, I don't know, and I tried to look this past week, and we haven't found it written. So we're going so we to ask the CONCOM to be more yeah, specific, and we're going to look if they did have a meeting, is it in the minutes, and what they looked at. So, And also when they did it, obviously, when might be relevant, as we've discussed. That's what I'm suggesting, yeah, or let me say that. Um, Director of Public Works, uh, as per the plan, stormwater must stay on site, and they would not, uh, no driveway from Mill Village Road, which is not on the plan, and I guess that's, like, <coughs> keep it that way. Board of Selectmen uh, would like to request robust traffic planning and input, including, um, Oh, about the driveway and the curb cut. Oh, it's, it's just the, the writing that I'm having a hard time with. Um, restyle or redesign to fit the area. Um, same about the design, that the design might not fit the area. And the same with lighting, to be uh, conscious of the lighting. Police chief. Um, one, traffic management and impact plan. Two, exterior lighting. Three, exterior and interior. Oh, security cameras including entry and exit points. Um, we didn't talk about that. Drive around, they, they, police and fire need to drive around the building um, for patrols and security functions. All the way around the building? Yeah. So they can't currently? Uh, building Commissioner, no objection to the project moving forward. I would recommend that careful attention during the planning process be paid to screening of the site as well as maintaining the lighting to the Dollar General property and possible lighting diffusers so during evening hours it is not disruptive to abutters. Um, then other letters from Darren Gray, our engineer, and Bruce Hunter, as I mentioned. So thank you very much for all the public comments, both uh, verbal and written. At this point, I'm not going to uh, close the public hearing because there could still be new information coming up. And by closing a, a public hearing, that means you're not supposed to take any more information. And I don't, wanna, I don't think we want to do that at this point. But the planning board does want to talk about what, what we need to do next. Um, and having thought that we might need more information. We actually have a draft of a um, of a letter to get some requests for quotes from engineering peer review of the commercial site plan review, the reduced parking special permit, and stormwater permit application for the Dollar General at Mill Village Road. So Pat has drafted this for us. Everybody on the planning board has a copy of this. You want to grab that and I think we can probably decide that um, so normally the procedure would be to decide what peer reviews we want 
and then uh, get some quotes from a few different firms that we think can do the job and have them um, and tell, us, a list tell us what they can do. It's, it's, it's attached, attached to your letter. All right, and then look for them. Um, and so then we'll get three or four quotes, hopefully, and then the planning board would just select uh, one or more peer reviews, and that would be paid for by the applicant. And then it would be at another meeting that these peer review people would come, present their findings based on the site plan review that was submitted by the applicant. It would continue the public hearing, so as people hear from the, uh, the details of stormwater and traffic and all the rest of that, public would still have another chance to, to add some input, and the applicants would also have a chance to either um, to answer questions and or revise plans or, or whatever they would uh, want to do. So that's what we're going to do now. Can we, uh, are we in a position to do, um, speaking of well, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, we have, we, we want peer review for traffic, we want review for wetlands, we want review for, um, can, I've got is, can I interrupt because what I've I got is say it might affect what traffic, we are doing. What I've got is, excuse me? Could I interrupt? I, I didn't realize you were going to stop the public input and I was walking up as you stopped yeah. it. I just have, I'd like to respond to what you've just said. I won't say anything else. What is, what is your name? My name is Greg Franceschi. I live at 80 North Main Street. Um, Sign that paper if you would. Gladly. Um, I feel like we're wasting your money and we're and you're wasting our money and I don't see the point of you voting on something that they may not be wanting to follow up on and spend any more money if the consensus which seems to be pretty close to unanimous if it isn't unanimous is that people don't want the project to happen at all and the bylaws say that you need to have a special permit if it's over 4,000 square feet, why don't we, before we spend a penny doing any other studies, or before we create the illusion that the town supports this project by getting these studies done, coming back with whatever answers the, the professionals have to give us, why don't we ask these guys to go back to their headquarters and touch base with everyone to make sure that they are willing to build a building that is under 4,000 square feet. I don't like this process. It's like we're all here giving our input, but nobody's answering any of our questions. There's no dialogue. And I understand that that's the way it's done and that, you know, that's just the way it's done. But it's not a good way to do it. And I think that it would be much more useful for you guys to tell all of us with a vote right now that you're going to recommend to the planning, the zoning board, that they don't allow this project to be over 4,000 square feet, and that these guys have the opportunity to make sure that everyone on their end doesn't want to go forward or they do want to go forward if it's under 4,000 square feet, because I don't think you'd have the kind of turnout here that you have if it was a smaller project and it wasn't going to have the scale of input or impact, impact that obviously this will. Thank you. So I'll just go over the, um, I'll go over the procedures one more time. I, I said at the beginning and maybe some people weren't here or weren't, weren't you know, didn't get it all. But so we're, we are an elected planning board and the town folks, you guys hopefully elected us. Um, I've been on it for 12 years, others have been on longer and others have been on shorter, so we've done a lot of projects. Um, I would say, personally, I don't agree with all the procedures and rules either, but there's reasons for them and I know that we can get in trouble as a town if we don't follow them. So that's kind of our, that's what you elected us to do, is follow the town zoning bylaws. So I, I welcome everybody to read the town bylaws, they're here at the town, they're on the website. In particular, the site plan review, which is what we're doing now. Site plan review comes first. 
if that does is endorsed, then it goes for a special permit to the Zoning Board of Appeals. So the two separate, and that's the way it is. I, I didn't make those rules. Um, and as I tried to clarify earlier, we have to look at, the Planning Board looks at the, the bylaws and what's written down and what's allowable and what's not allowable. We have certain parameters. The special permit, and the reason why we, when we as a planning board voted in this bylaws, we put special permit. Special permit gives the town much more say over what goes in in different places. Because a special permit basically says, it's, 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 it's not a no or a yes, it's only if, we, only if we really want it. So that has a lot more leeway, whereas the, special, the uh, site plan review is more of, you know, it's 9,000 square feet, it's zone commercial, they have entrance, they have egress, and we can get into, as I mentioned earlier, um, characteristics of the structure and uh, the, the visibility given that, that neighborhood and that. So we're going to look at some of those issues. The primary things we want to do is get the facts. So right now we're going to try to figure out how to get some peer review people because none of us are, I don't think any of us are engineers, but even if we were, we want peer review um, for some of the big issues. And so that's what Rachel was um, to. starting to talk about before before you spoke so that's what so that's the procedure and if we're wrong you know let us know um, but I think that's the way we're gonna we're gonna continue and I'm sorry if you're not getting a reaction from us we don't normally give a reaction until we get more of the facts we get the peer review that's that's what we're supposed to do and obviously we see an overwhelming opposition to this project that's pretty clear we can also you know, and it's happened in other towns. You can't just say we're going to deny this thing because then the applicant can sue when it causes all kinds of trouble and then the town's worse off. So we'd like to do things what we think is the appropriate way. We will get involved with, we'll get the, we, we, will, we will get the engineers, we will get the legal opinions, um, and then I'd suggest that we come back and have another meeting. We're in it for the long haul. I hope you all are too. We often don't see people at our planning board meetings. Um, it's a delight. Thank you for taking the time to explain it, John. So, um, so Rachel was starting to go through the types of Tally's got one more thing. issues that we need to have looked into. Go, Tally. And please let me know. I'm going to try to be really nice tonight, but we do want to. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. It's you know. So. Mr. Chair, I just have one quick question. Yeah. Will there be a third-party um, independent peer review um, just around the adhering to our bylaws and regulations? Is there be any specific? By doing that, or is it all falling under these other subcategories of engineering? What do you mean by falling uh, by adhering to the bylaws? Will be anyone um, doing direct oversight to be sure that throughout this whole process, the applicants are adhering to all of our bylaws? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's peer review. Yeah, that's the peer review. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, we'll yes. and then that specifically. yeah, yes. And I mentioned Pat Smith from the FERCOG. Um, she really looks at all the administrative things okay. to make sure they're meeting all the letters of the law there. And then that's, and they merge that with the technical engineering kinds of things. And then the, the one that I think is going to be a little, n a little new to us maybe is the one, um, you know, minimize unreasonable departure from the character and scale of building in the vicinity as viewed from public ways. So that's not something that necessarily, a, that's not a stormwater engineer does that. So that's, uh, uh, that will be somebody, we might have to ask for some you know, kind of survey to go within Two three miles. I don't know what that means, but we yeah, want to. Yeah. yeah. So that's a that might be a little bit different, different kind of review, but we definitely. So, uh, is it reasonable to ask for economic impact on local businesses? Absolutely. I'm sure there's case study of that in other communities. Mm -hmm. Oh, I say absolutely. I know it definitely comes under the the special permit. We'll Wait, see how it comes under. Um, character of the neighborhood. Character of the neighborhood more than economic impact. Yeah. Bruce is going to stand up. Yeah, uh, again, got to read the things. So we're looking for, um, I'm sorry. If, if we don't get to pick a peer review, then we can't you know, get, get answers to your questions. So I'm really trying to be patient here. Bruce, you got to come and speak in a mic. Sorry. here, but the plans do say that was submitted that we should review the, 
that their architectural drawings should be looked at, They're included as part of the submission. I have not seen an architectural drawing yet. They need to be submitted with the package or this application is incomplete. Thank you. So, all right, you want to go through? I got my list. Well, right. if you talk about environmental impact, right, stormwater, separate almost, because you've got water moving and you've got wetlands. You've got. Well, we're um, going to. So, a full stormwater. Full, full stormwater. Bylaw review. Uh -huh. Right? So, that's one. Good? Yes. I love agreeing to things. So are we considering that part of the environmental impact? Well, then let's add the underneath same, is. Be separate? So what would be separate from that? I don't know, a review of the, I mean, stormwater review is an engineer, it's not a biologist. Well, how does CONCON play into that? I mean, yeah. if they've already had their review of it with their own fear, do we have to do it again? No, they didn't. They determined that it wasn't a wetlands, is it what they me told already. me verbally. I okay. haven't seen that in writing, but that's what they said, Walk so there's there. been no review. Okay. Uh, so are you, thinking, are you thinking that we need to do another one? Is that what you're saying? That's what we I think. We need to do the first stormwater bylaw. Stormwater bylaw is absolutely our Stormwater and wetlands are two different things. You that's can't what I think. Those off. are two different things. That's what I think. Yeah. They are. Okay, I'm, that's why I'm confused as to what you're saying. I'm saying that the CONCOM, if they did not, if they determine it's not a wetlands, then this, that's done. But, that's the but we don't so know. Not necessarily. Not if necessarily storm, well, you if our stormwater peer review finds that there's wetlands, then we need to go back. Right. I think that's a good point. Okay. Well, that's what, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So. Many of these firms do both. And, yeah. and then some of the erosion issues, are they separate or they come under stormwater? I guess. So I think that's what that should also look under. There were some comments about erosion issues, both during construction and after. It's not looking. <laughs> I have a point on, I've got a comment on point. <laughs> got a point. Yeah. I'm so sorry, but environmental review, um, someone mentioned milk and things like that. Um, if you've ever been near a grocery store that disposes of milk, um, dumpsters will have sour milk containers, and so I don't know if the Board of Health also needs to be put in it. So. Thank you. It is directly related to what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> She was at the children's uh, librarian. Where's we my folder? There. She knows how to do this. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Our kids love her. Um, so what I got under, um, I, I'm going to also add, because it's connected but different, is the legal opinion about the, yes. the clear cutting of the trees. Yes. And I think that's, first it's a legal thing, and then it's a, what does it do to the environmental impact? Environment. Yeah. So, that, so that is this another peer? Review well, that's just that that council. council. We start with town council and get uh, opinion from our town council about what to do. Well, you're making a list of yeah, possible yes. peer reviews, not yeah. the actual list. But John, yeah. that isn't really the town's property. It's the state's property. No. I think they they need to address the legal aspect of it. I don't think it's really the town's responsibility. Except that we are the ones who are moving. I mean, that's right. Not, I think well, we might I, ask I will, Adam about I, it. Because, just hear me, Rachel. Yeah. We need to do traffic. And I would like some written comment from Mass Highway on everything that took place there and, and the pending curb cut yeah. the negotiations yep. and yep. stuff. But to um, Judy Kundal's point as well, Adam, I think it's worth consulting with Adam on the... I, I just uh, stated my opinion. It's yep. just my no, opinion. No, but I, I agree, but I would have him talk to the state because that's well, not something we're going to do, right? So. Yeah. Somebody needs to. Basically, all, basically, we want to know what the type the people. But we just asked them to have the state speak to us. So, do we need our council to do that? You know, we want some written input from them. Well, I think be, as a kind of a violate, if there's a violation there, I think we want council to be involved in what. But it's not our. How to it's act. not our fight. I don't think, Rachel. I think it's the state's issue, not the town of Deerfield. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard tonight that there's people in the town who. Are well, I know they're upset. I yeah. mean, a lot of people are well, upset. They're but curious about what the legal yeah. action could be about it, too, I guess. So I guess. Uh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no absolutely. It, right? No, absolutely. No, but that, I think. Right. So why wouldn't we have. I think Adam. But you're right, the state has to be involved. Right. 
So then you, DOT has all right. to. So anything else for our attorney? There was somebody else said something about what else we might need to look okay, at. I'm, I'm confused, John. You were talking about peer review, and Frontage. then you've got another category now It's going to be the, what we're going to talk to. to I think, I think what John is doing is listing a to -do what list. we need to have them look at right. and make sure that firm is capable of doing all those reviews. Right. Okay. All right. So I just, just right. want to get it down here. So let's get into so traffic. Now there is a they submitted some traffic information, but I look at it quickly. I, it, we need a more thorough. I, I believe. And I well, think we need a review of it. I mean, I think that's definitely. It. So, um, yeah. so we need someone who can do a thorough traffic, and that includes the pedestrian, the bike, the parking. Um, they would have to talk to DOT. That would well, happen. one thing that came up that I had a, had an interest in just asking the question is the eight parking spaces, are they going to be in the way of a truck going to the back? Is that, because I remember you were going to put yeah. the, pay, the spaces next to the building there, right? The extra eight spaces? Correct. And so, no, those spaces, I would not design them in a truck route. They would be out of the way of any truck maneuvering area. I wouldn't propose that, nor would I be disingenuous okay, enough no, to no, make I, the spaces I, small enough. For I, I just had a memory back from when you first talked that they were going to be along that side mm -hmm. of the building. I thought the eight spaces. No. They, they would be, they're ghosted on our plan. They're, they're, they are. So they're over to the right. Yeah. They're not next to the building. They're, there. they're on the other side of the. Correct. There, okay. there are space. Well, that was my question. Thank see you. Them that's there, that's there. all I was asking. Yeah. I can't see it clearly. No, I know. It's the light going on there. So traffic, so traffic, so traffic um, yeah. includes, we agree. Um, and that includes looking at traffic lights and turning lanes, it's dangerous corners, so all these things come under traffic, uh, including um, the different peak times and weekends. I mean, a lot of this information wasn't there. Peak seasons, I thought was a good, uh, mm -hmm. that was weekends. an interesting point too, so this yeah. just needs to be a lot more. Thorough. Uh, and then also the, uh, the trip generation, again, it's, it's really, we're looking at a 9,000 square foot retail, so I'd like to see comparisons to other 9,000 square foot retailers, not just mm -hmm. Dollar General's own, own traffic uh, right. from their current stores, but what if this was something something different? John, Darren had another, some input. Uh, yeah. I'm looking, hold on. Go ahead, speak, Darren. No, I'm just saying, you know, they have uh, the land use they have. You need to come up with like, a variety store, right? Well, I can hear you. So, so John, I agree with you, but it's not really the people on TV can't. It has to be like, we would want to see the, the most heavily used 9,000 square foot store. That's what we want to see the traffic for. Yeah. At peak season during the peak. During um, the weekend. During the on weekend, a Saturday. The Just as a point of clarification. Uh, well, <laughs> so the land use code that we used is based on an ITE land use code. It's, and uh, it's the one that DOT is oftentimes, is the one that they suggest we use for this type right. of facility. Right. If and they decide they want something different for this particular location, then we're happy to look at it. And that's what we want to look at, because we might want something different, because a lot of us have some issues with that. Um, Even in the years that we've lived here, there used to be a flashing so, red and yellow light on Mill Building 5 and 10. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Little while ago, we had to have a little while ago, it got run over so many times, we finally took yeah. out the little island that was on, and it's not there anymore. So that's why... Yes, there that's why our uh, all hit it. that's why our traffic report we want to have DOT because it is a state highway, so we have a little less control. But they need to be involved. They, they took the light out and now it's just a, you just cross at will. That scares me to turn into a thing with all turning lanes. Yeah, I mean. So the other um, okay, so we got right. So parking, not just from Dollar General, but any other nine thousand square foot. Retail. I guess the same with lighting. That, that, same, um, same. That I mean, I think that's really right. Uh, study. Landscaping issues would be a regular um, part of the, um, the peer review. So those are some of the big ones. Um, Anybody see anything else that we're missing? So then there was the issue about home values, for example. Mm -hmm. now, that's, that's a question. I don't, I don't know. Economic Do we impact. get appraisals or something to see if it does change 
home values? Because that's no one wants that to happen. Um, and I'm not sure what peer review or who does that kind of stuff. It's pretty hard unless the building's up there and you get like uh, realtors like the assessors, they do like lists, like like properties, and right. that's how they compare. So it'd be pretty hard until the building's up to see if it really affects their value, I would think. Well, I guess what you do, you get data from other places. Right. And um, I know just looking, they're trying to, they just built a lot of stores over the past couple of years. Yeah, well, that's right. a good point. You could probably go someplace else and see how it affected those values. Yeah. You're right. Um, now, who would you get to do that job? That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Whether you get an appraiser or a... These companies that go around and do assessing for the town, maybe a, a company like yeah, that. Actually, we could check with our town assessor on that one. Right. What they think about that. Got it. Then maintenance, anything that is agreed to, this is a and I think it's a shortcoming of a town sometimes is it's hard for us to to, to monitor and uh, keep people's feet to the fire. So that's something the town has to get better at if we do make any restrictions on it. And if you do say that you're going to put plantings and they're going to cover the fence, then we would hate to hear a report that plantings are so far apart. Mm -hmm. So that, that would be more of a sign of a contract and maybe some kind of escrow funds that would be paid to the town. So if it was broken, we could go, you know, the town would have the money to go plant the trees or something. So that's something. The landscape design, that's John, you'd have, yeah. you know, put specifications in so many feet apart what the, the yeah. plantings are and how Well, I think that's what they're, right. they're putting on their plan, but then we have to make sure. And, and, they and, do it, right. And but you're going to be very, yeah. like, tight specs, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of 10 feet, they're 2 feet or whatever. Uh, yeah, we all know that John Third and Bill Code, this special company is Creed Hill. <coughs> and that fence was beautiful for the first year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just as you're turning into Greenfield on Dirt Hill Road. Oh, oh, yeah. Now, yeah. It, now it looks like crap. Yeah. So the fence might be nice for the first year. Yeah. But I think the escrow account um, to maintain the property and to deal with an abandoned building is yeah. a good point. And then the stormwater, I think, also gets into the neighbor's septics and leach fields. That should be in that. The, um, I guess if you could give us some evidence of. Uh, that you, that you will get the gas, because that's an issue for everybody in town. If you, if Berkshire Gas isn't given hookups, so if you get one, I, I'm surprised, because no one else is getting one. Right, and we're, 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 we're talking to the utility providers right now. Yeah. If, if they don't have the capacity to provide it, we'll do a private system to cope in. So that, then that changes the site plan a little bit, too. So yeah, the, the, yeah. the plan itself won't change other than you'll see a tank appear on the plan, but there's right. no site plan adjustments I would need to do to accommodate it. I went up changing the footprint of the program. You see a tank and a quick little small line that runs to the building. Well, I mean, I mean, that's, more, that, right that's more truck traffic filling up and stuff too. Then, but. sure, I'd be like any private home that has a propane service. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the EMS building did for a propane tank. Did yeah. you bear on the dirt? So going back to our, um, we want to put this RFP out. Pat, can you walk us through this? You helped, uh, you drafted this. So we want to put this out to, we have a list of, so just so other people know, so we have a list of, I don't know, like 20 engineering firms type, peer review type people that we've kind of vetted and we've used them over the years. And so that way we don't have to rethink it all the time. And the zoning board and the CONCOM use these people too. So we'll pick, you know, three or four of them and try to get some quotes, quotes from them. Also, John, while I'm, while I'm thinking of it, I mean, does Pat have a quote for what she's got to do on this project, and how does that fit into this? Well, that's part of what we're coming up with here. That's too, in this thing? Okay. All right. I just, uh -huh. just so we get that down. Okay. So what you have before you is a draft of an RFQ based on an earlier one that you guys had used. And it just goes through the basics of the project description on the first page, gives some information about how people should submit their comments. And we need to specify who the town contact would be for that. Then on, on the second page, it goes through a, the proposed scope of work, and that breaks out into an initial review, site visits, a detailed review, a final report, and what meetings are anticipated. The way this is drafted right now, there is not a specific bullet list 
of the, the concerns, so you look under initial review and it references infrastructure, second line, quick review of the most current proposed site development plans and supporting doc documents relative to infrastructure, stormwater management, and traffic circulation. So those are the main things that are the, the, the key issues that are mentioned. And then under the detailed review, it shows the specific regulations that uh, would, would the review would be uh, relative to. Uh, this is just engineering and traffic in this. This does not include the zoning compliance. That if you want a FERCOG to do that zoning compliance review, which we sometimes do on projects, uh, I would need to submit a, a separate estimate of what time would be entailed in that, and I, I can do that if, if you so wish. Um, so go, hearing what you, you know, what you guys are doing in the, in the great list that you were just working on, I think it would be beneficial for us to include that yeah. specific yeah, bulleted list in here. That is correct. The way it works is the, uh, the, the board develops the scope. They get the quotes from firms that have the expertise that would be required to fulfill these. And this is a fairly broad range, including traffic engineers and so forth. So that would tend to lead us towards uh, larger firms that have a broader range of expertise within the firm. Uh, they, uh, the, the board looks at those, determines which they, they feel is the most appropriate in terms of when it can be accomplished, if they can do it within a reasonable time frame, what the cost will be, and so forth. The board picks that firm. The applicants are told what the cost of it is. They submit the money to the town. It's put in a special account just for this project. And then the work is done. On behalf of the town, the town pays those engineers. So that, that's set up. So it's very clear that that report is for the town. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. a very important element of that. And then in here, so they would do site plan. They would do site visits. We would want them to come to at least one planning board meeting. At least uh, one, yeah. At least one. Depending on how much the way the engineers typically talk to one another. As the chair has noted, you know, the engineering expertise is not on the board. I don't have the engineering expertise. It's always better for the engineers to sit down and work out those details amongst themselves and then come back and report to the planning board the findings of the peer review engineer, their discussions with the engineers uh, that are working for the applicants and, and any conclusions that they've come to <coughs> present to the board for, for their review. We do also um, have um, we recommend low impact development installations. So that's something that we're gonna to wanna to look at. Did you look into that? Is that what you're using for, especially for stormwater and erosion controls and things like that? Um, so that's what our peer review would look at mm -hmm. as well. Um, Pat, do you think there's certain firms that look at more of the um, that neighborhood character issue, how, how do they? I don't know all of the firms on that list, and, and, I'd, and you know, I'll be honest with you, you're talking about sort of doing the neighborhood analysis and the market review and impact on uh, property values. That's above and beyond. That's a, that's a different kind of expertise yeah. than what is typically included in these types of engineering firms. So, you know, and that's another whole different kind of study. It may be that there is some information that could be gleaned from some research, but um, we'd have to, I, you know, I'm not sure who would exactly, frankly, be the right organization or entity to do that research. I also wanted to mention when you were talking about uh, the traffic study, it sounds like you're going towards requiring the applicants to do a full traffic study. Yes. So I think that, you know, that needs to be made clear. The, the, the board, you don't hire somebody to do that traffic study for you. They do a traffic right. study, and you hire somebody to review uh, it. Right. So, so that's, I, that's important. It needs, it, you know, they, it needs to be made clear that that is a, that is a requirement at this time, I think. Is that, yes. that good? So is that something, you can, if you could have that done, and then we'll have someone review it. But again, is that, as you've heard, that intersection and the timing of the year and all kinds of other aspects of it, it really requires a full. I have a lot of notes here. We're going to go back and talk to our respective team yeah. about making sure we address the items as it's appropriate that were raised here tonight. Yeah. All right. Is that changing the state rules? Is that the specific time of traffic study because of the state rules? 
I'm sure they require certain studies to be done and stuff because it is a state highway, like you say. Yeah, and anything that would be done there needs to be, it, it's a mass dot jurisdiction. So that's the point is well taken that we well, need to hear from mass dot about multiple aspects of this property and its proposal. There's also established uh, traffic going through the whole area that's done periodically. I don't know how often, maybe twice a year. There are traffic counts that our transportation department does. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked at those yet, but, but I can certainly call those up. So you could do some What's historical they're comparison. They're often incomplete. I mean, you have to keep, well, the, yeah, the keep thing. I know keep having, having, it having done it for, for, the, for the cell phone store, yeah. the, there was, you just go there and there's a, there's a thing all made up that's, that's used as the basis of how many cars go by there. Well, that's the ITE trip generation. They, yeah. They've already well, so you know, to This it. is actual measured trips. That they put those things across the road and that that and gives count. you existing data about yeah, exactly. the size yeah. and number of vehicles that travel yeah. at certain yeah. times and that can definitely be very useful yeah. information to feed into a full traffic study right. and their traffic study should be based off of the busiest retail environment right. you can find since it could be rented out to a very busy right. retailer as opposed to dollar general okay. Is it this board's responsibility to determine what has to be made right about that, or does that go somewhere else? I asked Highway. It's their property. They needed to get permission from them to do all that work. So I would say it's their, what, whatever they require. They could have piled it wherever, but the property was owned by Mass Highway, so I would assume. No, but what she's saying is that the property behind the buffer there, that's owned by the private individual. Are there any ramifications to no, that? I don't believe there was any trees on that piece of property. It was like where the right of way was. It was just open field, grass, they rode a beat it. Yeah. If you look at the property pins, you can see so, the stumps. So anyway, no, the planning board's not, so if you could bring that to other people's attention, that'd be great. Well, DOT. That's, that's one of the things that you said you were gonna look at, though, was whether there was an issue had to come down and the timing of it, and maybe right. that's reason to so say no to this. well, but right. What do you do to clean it but up? your question was beyond that, then if, right. they, if yeah, and that's it's not you, yeah. Not you. yeah. I, I think all those trees were on Mass Highway. If you look at the property, well, again, line, we'll find out. I know, but yeah. I'm just, yeah. just probably great if they were all on that. I think they are, Phil. You take a look at the property that's pins, yeah. and but then do we have an ally? <laughs> that's that. quick, uh, this is helpful comments. Yeah. Um, I was, I was there Thank you. Bruce, you had something new? Uh, yeah, so I was just wondering the fees that you're discussing for the engineers and um, other uh, consultants, are they uh, estimated fees with an hourly rate? There'll be a, the, what we're asking, what we're trying to get through here tonight, if we could, is to put it out and get quotes from engineering from these firms. And well, so the however they, however they, they, however we ask and however they propose it is, uh, is what the quote will be. I just didn't want to and those are estimates, and what, what we ask the applicant to do is put the money down, and if it doesn't get all spent, they get some back. But it's, what, what if they need to spend more? Then they, then they ask for more, and the applicants are asked to give more to complete the project. Thanks, Pat. What else? So, so, I so let's, let's do this letter for the quotes from the, uh, for the stormwater and the traffic, and then the legal opinions and the uh, looking at some of the other character of the town issues, we'll try to figure that out over the next couple, couple okay. days or weeks with other people. How's that? And you want me to file an estimate for the zoning compliance, for the zoning compliance review as well? Okay. Put that for good. Yes. Yes? Okay. So what I'll do, if you, want to, uh, you guys are keeping a good list. I was keeping a list. If you want to send me some material in the morning from your notes, I can pull this together and get a draft back. 
I don't know if you want to uh, delegate the authority to complete the review of it to the chair or the vice chair or someone else so that that decision could be made ra in the next couple of weeks, yeah. days even, mm -hmm. rather than uh, waiting till another meeting right. for that. How do we want to do this? We want to finalize this letter and be specific about what we're asking these firms to do and then send it out. Mm -hmm. Usually I sign these letters. Yeah, set up for your signature. Um, do you want to have another meeting before we do that? Do you all want to look at it? Would you get back to me in a timely fashion if you did look at it? I'll just fill it out for whatever we need and right. send it up. Right, I, and mm. we just determine the level of, of yep. peer review we I, need yeah. and pick I one tonight. just picking the high, highlights we what they really them. need to concentrate right. on, but I think they'll look at I the overall we project group personally. The yeah, but we'll list it. pick out something that we missed all. or something. Yeah. They respond. Yeah. But I think it's good oh, to give I us see. the I see what you're saying, yeah. Okay. So who do we want to send it to? I mean, we can send it to more than three or four. Well, who are the asterisk ones? Why are those send it to all of them. I don't know what those asterisks stand for. That list was provided by the town admin staff, oh. so we'd have to. This had something to do that. with the concom. There's so. only one with a star. Oh, that they had used that. No, there's a bunch on the other side. There's two sides to this. Thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, there you go. I mean, we've used some several of them before. I, I think this is more of a, not a one-person firm. We want to. Yeah. Because yeah. it's yeah. a couple different yeah. things. Yeah. 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 You've had some of these before you as peer reviews yeah. and as project proponents in the past. So I think we exactly. have some experience right. with enough of them to potentially get you a, a list to get quotes. You don't get too many quotes because then you have an administrative issue of going through all of the material. Right, right, so. right, right, right. I mean, that first column, the first five, I think are all com companies that can do both. Yep. I'm not as familiar with some of the other ones. That might be beneficial too, because they have so many associates involved in their firm that they can handle a lot of different yeah, things. Yeah. Otherwise, ones. dealing with a lot of individuals yeah, is more no, complicated. No. Right. So we're looking at Tie and Bond, Weston and Sampson, Berkshire Design Group, Collar and Colantino, SVE Associates. Okay. Darren is he? Oh, he snuck out. No, he's there he is. Who else? Yeah. Have you seen this list? Do you know? Do you know some of these? Raleigh Talbot open. I, I, I recognize that. Hey, we're putting uh, Darren in an awkward position. We maybe are, we should just give him the list I and he should I maybe. I know. Check off. Maybe if you want things. the applicant to weigh in, I'd be happy to give you the people that I work with too. Locally? I mean, uh, on this list? That first five that I mentioned, you've worked you know with? I'm familiar with all of them. I think they're all capable firms. Yeah. Good. All right, so I think we'll get some good quotes from those five. Yeah. Next time we'll maybe ask some others to try to be fair. I don't know. Anything else from the planning board members? Not this time. So do we want to um, vote that you follow through up on this, John, so that we know that that's moving? With or Pat, that yes. With Pat? And so. could we ask, um, Diana, can you be the town contact for this? Sure. So that as things come in, you let us know? And, yes. All right. So when will, how, how do you plan on making the decision, John? Well, we'll oh, so, so the first thing is to get this letter out, and then when the yeah, oh, that's, so that's then what the, I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, so when the quotes come back, then what we, we need do? a little committee, I think, to the, get together. Then it needs to be reviewed to make a decision for that. Yes. From the town's point of view. Um, so maybe two or three of us can do that in between the next meeting? Uh, yeah, sure. Darren, you want to help us? All those people in the first top five can do that. Yeah. No, we don't have soil scientists at the COC. No, for top five. No, okay. Ty and Vaughn can well, do it. No, on yeah. this, yeah, she means for COC. But those firms should have a licensed soil evaluator. Yeah. Yeah. Evaluator, yeah. yeah. I do. You have one. Most engineering firms can't pull that sort of stuff. Well, yeah. All right, so we'll, if, let's endeavor, so the Wednesday's a holiday, but let's endeavor to get this out by the end of the week, you think? Yeah. I will get you my draft tomorrow, and then I'm out for the rest of the week. <coughs> I'll be back Monday. Diane, are you around the you end around? of the week? Monday. So let's get this out by next Tuesday. Okay. And then um, we'll ask them, they, take, they need seven or ten days to? 
Yeah, you think? I, I yeah. Know. If it were me, I could flip that thing around pretty quick. Most mm -hmm. people who do peer review and are going to know the scope, even if you box it in, they're going to well, have Well, if we get the right one, they're turning around. If we don't. So let's give them seven days to submit something back to us. And then, um, then we'll put together a little committee to decide on one and, you know. Yeah, I think collectively reconvene and find out what's appropriate. Yeah. Right. Obviously, we're amendable to. All right, and then um, it sounds like we do want more information, so I'd recommend we continue this public hearing until uh, a later date. If, if so, if, if we get it out to them next Tuesday, they get it back, whether they would have any results by, uh, by the first Monday of August. Is that something we can expect? That's unlikely. My, my, my recommendation just would be, because we have to continue to a date and time certain, yeah. that we go to the next available hearing. I mean, there's some stuff that we're going to do regardless of what comes out of a peer review. We yeah. have a lot of feedback tonight. Uh, I would suggest we just go to the next available, and if we collectively decide that we need more time, August we, we simply continue to the next hearing yeah. after that. Yeah. August 6th is five August weeks, so we have a lot of time. Yeah. Is our first Monday of the month. So do we have a, um, does that require a motion to okay. continue a hearing? I think we normally do. Yeah, they should sign the form and then you should, um, you know, have the motion and vote it. It's the best format. And ideally, if you guys could wait a few minutes, we'll get you a copy so you go away with a copy yeah. of that. Sure. And, we're, and, the, uh, and we're making no, the arrangements are made for the counselor to the original right? version, because that's the key yeah. too. Can you see if it's in any of the, anything else over there? So do you want to make the motion and somebody make a motion second? Well, we need to make a motion to make sure that John goes through. No, I think that was just agree agreed. That's agreed? That's, uh, that's okay. an administrative okay. thing. Um, I disagreed to do that administratively. Uh, that, no, I thought to continue. I thought we wanted to But the motion is to continue the meeting until the... And who's making the motion and who's second? You can. I'll make the motion. Matt, do you have one of those? Second. Can you second it? It's not in any of this. Roger, Kip, you want to second that? I'll, I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> so all those in favor of, ex of continuing this public hearing until... August 6th at 7 p.m. here in the town offices? Aye. 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 Oppose? And then the applicant has to agree to that. No. <laughs> D of course, yeah. <laughs> 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 He's oh my God. I like that. <laughs> they are actually officially <laughs> requesting it. We can make it 5002. This is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I had it at the last meeting. Oh, I got it right here. So is there anything else? Um, any other business? Well, we so, so just so everybody knows the deal. So uh, um, we're going to get peer reviews. So we'll get them started on it. Potentially at the August 6th meeting, we'll hear back from them and or the applicants with some revisions. Um, it would be a surprise to me if we were able to take care of it all then. Um, so either... Uh, special meeting later in August or the first Monday of September, which is our traditional times to meet, might be another meeting with more information. So I encourage you all to keep, um, keep track of this. The recorder does a fantastic job um, keeping people notified and uh, with information. But I would ask that if, if an article says something that you're not sure about, don't jump to conclusions because some things get misinterpreted and it's, it's happened in the past and it causes problems. So check with the people involved. Um, it's just the way it is sometimes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sometimes the town council shows up, sometimes she doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was excited to see my salary had significantly yeah. <laughs> increased after the last meeting. <laughs> um, so the A&R that was on the agenda is not going to be... The, is, any, is anybody here for the A&R at 177 <laughs> Stillwater Road? <laughs> be surprised so we're not going to do that any other business they, not reasonably if in? I might interrupt you yep. did they sign the oh, uh, exemption on the 21 no. day rule I just did. No. oh jeez. so actually fill it in very similar to this and no, those are new dates no she's talking about the no I'm talking about the A&R because you signed. have a 21 day time frame you have to do it if they didn't actually, check actually, to um, allow that to be extended then you're in a uh, constructive grant owners, position. Yeah. What's the what's the particulars of that 177? Here we go. Here we go. I got it right here. 
Just need to see if they, they owe, if they they owe back taxes. That one. Is why we're not sure we could approve it anyway. So. Um, There's a place there that they can initial to waive the 21-day requirement. Who wrote that on the top of that? We don't actually know. I um, let's get in touch with them, and if we have to, we'll have a special vote in between. Uh, Do it by email. They did not. This was this was on. It looks like it was signed on the 26th of June. Um, so, but it seems like there's some other circumstances there that it might not be valid, so we have to check into that. Decided, if that's the one that someone called me too and said they didn't want to be here, so. So, 6th of August. Correct. 7 p.m., right? Yeah. So, if there's is no that, other. Is that something that we could send them the thing to sign if they still are interested or say something? You know? well, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, we're going to follow up on that tomorrow. We already had discussion Can before the meeting. Oh, all right. Yeah, because we're not sure if it's valid, if it's an app, if it's a valid application. Okay. So, um, any other business? We've already set a date for the next meeting. Any uh, motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Five Thank zero, you very zero. much for coming. All right. Thank you. See you all later. Thank you.